Hello and welcome back to Virginia, to the Virginia Beach Sports Center here in Virginia Beach, Virginia. It's the 2024 NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championships for Division Three. I'm Noah, alongside Stu Newstat. It's Championship Saturday. We had an action-packed day one, mostly prelims, several finals. Hope you joined us then. But today is the day that we crown new national champions in both the individual and team competition. Yeah, we talked about it a lot, how you needed to get here today to win a national title and help your team out. And we're going to see, like Noah said, new champions crowned today. But while you were away, the competition was not. We had a great field event to start the day off, and we'll take you through those events now. We brought the, brought the action to you earlier today, and we'll uh, start <laughs> things off here in the men's triple jump. In the men's triple jump, here is Shelvin Garrett, the second from Wisconsin Whitewater. He had it wrapped up by jump four, but on his final jump, he absolutely took off and set a new personal record. Seeing on your screen now, Cole Goodman from Rochester, he ended up finishing the competition in second place with a massive jump. But the best came last for Shelvin Garrett, the second from Wisconsin Whitewater, 15.97, a new personal best that moves him up from 11th all time to second all time and one jump you see he knew it immediately absolutely fired up gives his coach a big high five and he becomes your national champion in the men's triple jump moving on now to the shot put the king went down joseph white last year's champion you see on your screen now ends up finishing second but it was Jacob Ekaway from Wisconsin Eau Claire, who in his final throw went 18.7 to lock up the national championship for Eau Claire. It was an absolutely epic duel between those two and a big day for Eau Claire. They put three in the top five. You see those giants hugging it out right there. But congratulations to Jacob Ekaway from Eau Claire. Gets the hug from his coach, gets the trophy, and he came through in crunch time when it mattered most. Moving up to the vertical jumps, it was the women's high jump, and we had a big competition. Four athletes actually tied at the same bar, but Grace Alley had the least amount of misses at the bar and takes her second national title of the weekend. Her teammate Sarah Hoskins from Loris go 1-2, a big 18 points. And now to the men's heptathlon. It was a battle for the ages. The outdoor decathlon champ, Mitch Stegeman from Eau Claire takes on last year's indoor champion Jackson Anderson of Williams, and it took their personal bests going after each other. Oh, Stegman, you can see there, sees the bar, stay up, hit a huge pole vault that catapulted him into the lead. Jackson Anderson actually had a bigger and faster last 1K, missed Stegman by 15 points. Stegman, huge 10 points for Eau Claire, and they are actually leading now on the team competition. And you know, that's kind of where we start things off today on day two before the hurdles get going. Eau Claire currently leads Whitewater 35 to 24. Oshkosh is there in 20, and Carthage has 18. But there are a lot of entries still to go. Lacrosse hanging out in fifth right now. We'll see a lot of their athletes. On the women's side, Loris is getting things done in the field, led by Grace Alley. 43 points right now. A big lead when you consider how many events they are scoring. Johns Hopkins has 16. Same with MIT and Rochester with four, but a lot of these teams have entries and points still left to attain. And that's the lay of the land here today on Championship Saturday, day two of these indoor championships. We'll turn our attention first to the track on the women's 60-meter hurdles. They're just starting to get their blocks set up right now, and we'll move through final by final all the way throughout the day, culminating in the 4 by 400 meter relays. Yeah, this hurdle final on both sides should be pretty epic. We were talking all yesterday about how it took your own personal best to get to these finals. And so do they have an extra gear? If it took your best yesterday during the prelims, surely you're going to take it up a notch and bring it today. The field is loaded. We have national champions ranging from the 400-meter hurdles outdoors to All-Americans in this event last year to All-Americans in the outdoor event as well. So looking forward to this one as these women get ready to go here in the 60-meter hurdles. All right, we got our first shot of a full field live for you. We'll run you through this very first final of the day going in eight lanes. Ajim Nate from Anyanta 
Chloe Yoder from Susquehanna, Hannah Zastro from Wisconsin Stout, Lauren Matthews from Stevens, Kelsey Seelock from Bethel, Natalia Sawyer from Buffalo State, Eliza Cardwell from Amherst, and Nicola Nadeau from Elmhurst. So it's going to be your first round of finals, eight positions here, so everyone's going to get to be an All-American, but we have no idea in what order they'll finish. Yeah, Kelsey Seelock and Hannah Zastro came into this competition as the top contenders, and from yesterday's prelims, we can kind of see that's trending in the right direction, but don't count Laura Matthews. She gets lane four right now, ran well in yesterday's prelim, prelim as the number one time, so we'll see if she takes advantage of where she is. She's in the middle of track, to her left and to her right are Seelock and Zastro, so she'll have eyes on either side of her to see where she's at. Yeah, you don't want to discount uh, Natalia Sawyer out there in six. We saw quite a lot of her yesterday, and she's looking pretty fast this week. Yeah, she has national championship experience here last year in the 400 Open. Like I mentioned earlier, she was the 400-meter hurdle champion, so national champion amongst her competition right now. We'll see what she can do in the lower hurdles with 60 meters in front of her. Eliza Cardwell of Amherst sits to Natalia Sawyer's left. She was in the long jump competition yesterday, made it to the final. She's the sixth seed right now, ran a personal best of 860, wearing those championship white jerseys that Amherst wears, so we'll see what she can do as well. Field now being introduced over the stadium. PA will take to our blocks here really quickly as we set the kickoff at 3 o'clock local time. And Nicola Nadeau, Nadeau, excuse me, of Elmhurst sitting there in the eighth lane. She was eighth here last year and hopes to improve upon that performance and move up the rankings, putting Elmhurst on the map right now. You can kind of see that nervous tension. They've been staying there for about five minutes this entire time that we've been talking. So we saw a big trend yesterday of the women, the athletes getting a little anxious in the blocks, having to stand up a few times in these sprint events. We'll see that probably again today. Yep, we'll hope for, hope for clean starts. Lane assignments on your screens as we get set to get this track action underway here on Championship Saturday. And we're away clean. Matthews with a good start. Seelock on her inside. But Sawyer are looking really good there out in lane six. Matthews stumbles. It's going to be Sawyer, perhaps. Let's get an official reading here. It is. It is Natalia Sawyer from Buffalo State all the way out in lane six. Becomes our first national champion on the track today. Officially 8.5 over Hannah Zastro in second and 8.53. And Laura Matthews in third 8.57 but it's Sawyer out in lane six with kind of a surprise victory here in this women's 60. Yeah she drops down from the 400 meter hurdles inside here at the 60. We'll Fifth all time now and has to take another look at this race. Go back to the replay here off to kind of a slow start but Sawyer moved up that whole time you saw a stumble from Matthews and then winning by a shoulder over Hannah Zastro from Wisconsin Stout. Natalia Sawyer looks back in disbelief and gets things underway here with a national championship in the women's 60. Wow, and if that's a if that's what's to come here, get ready for an action-packed Saturday. 8.50, tied for fifth all-time in an incredible race there. Your order, Natalia Sawyer, Hannah Zastro, Laura Matthews, Chloe Yoder, Nicola Nadeau, Eliza Cardwell, Ajim Nate, and Kelsey Seelock, one through eight right there. Wow. Yeah, absolutely electric race. Looking forward for much more of the same here. You see the embrace next on the track as the volunteers adjust the height of the hurdles, crank them up a little bit. The men will take their turn on the 60-meter hurdles. 
You know, it's really impressive what Natalia Sawyer can do. She has that ability to drop mm -hmm. down from that. I mean, you keep mentioning her national championship from outdoors, but that's got to take such skill and strength and such a new race to kind of figure out as you only have 60 meters to go over these hurdles. I think we often see in the hurdles that people who are just really good at getting over them can often have the range to excel kind of in hurdles at any distance. And so, uh, yeah, she definitely put that on display, got over clean. If you hit a hurdle and you only have 60 meters, you're just not going to make up that distance. Well, we'll see her later in the afternoon. She's in that 400 meter open race as well. Maybe more of her her strength, so to speak. But now maybe we're kind of going to see her in the 100 meter hurdles. I believe she ran that race as well, but maybe she'll opt to try the double outdoors. Yeah, if you have success in the 60 hurdles indoors, I think you definitely set your sights outdoors in the 100 as well. I think there's a lot of transferable skills there. The men are doing some last minute adjustments to their blocks and we'll be back up with you in a minute here to introduce that field and get you hyped up for this upcoming men's 60 hurdles. Back on the track here, 2024 NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championships here at the Virginia Beach Sports Center. Just watched an electric race play out over the women's 60 hurdles. And now on your screen, it's the men's turn. We hiked up the height of the hurdles and the men take to the track now. We'll read you through the lane assignments and then let you know what to watch out for there. Starting in lane one is going to be Azariah Anderson from Trinity. In lane two is going to be Eli Etherton of Nebraska Wesleyan. In three, Jason Agumang of Rowan. In four, it's going to be Jake Gladio from Trine. Jason Ekior from Bethel is going to be out there. In lane five, Blake Hardison from Dubuque. In six, Dontre Senegal from McMurray. In seven, and in eight, it's Kwaku Nekroma, the sophomore from Rowan. And then Sane Field here we have featuring last year's national champion, of Eli Atherton of Nebraska Wesleyan facing off against 2021 400 meter national champion Jake Gladio of Trine. It took personal best, season's best to get here. Jason Ikeor of Bethel was second in the 110 hurdles. He was second in the 60 last year. Can he get it done this year as a sophomore? He did all that as a freshman. This was the first action we saw yesterday, the prelims in these hurdles, and it really set the tone for the day as we started seeing personal bests and season bests come down. We knew the track was fast, and these guys are just going to prove it again here in this final. Yeah, we have one, two, and three from last year's national championships back in here. If you've caught up on that, that's Eli Atherton, Jason Ikeor, and Jake Gladio going one, two, three, plus the fourth-place finisher, Blake Hardison of Dubuque. One, two, three, and four are all back here for this year. And we could see the same order. We could see an entirely different order this year. Some events this weekend are wide open with champions moving on from Division Three and graduating. And some events like this one are absolutely packed with historical talent. And so can someone step up, take the crown away, or is it going to be one of these familiar names becoming your national champion here in just a few minutes? Nkrumah from Rowan, he'll be in lane eight. He was fourth in the 110 hurdles last year. So a decorated field here as we kind of go through them all. Keep your eyes on the middle of the track, the end of the track, the entire track, because who knows? Stu, I'm really going to be tested here over the next seven seconds. Yeah, best of luck. I'm going to sit back and eye for you.
And the one thing these athletes, you know, those who have experience here at the national meet, they kind of know how long it takes for them to get introduced, how long they're standing there. So they're probably adjusting their warm-ups to kind of take that into account so they go to the line maybe a little bit more warmed up than normal. Yeah, these guys are pros. We saw them kind of sitting back on the blocks and relaxing now. We just see them shaking out the legs as they're introduced over the stadium PA and getting this crowd ready. We've got a great packed house here at the Virginia Beach Sports Center. It was an uh, electric atmosphere yesterday, and I know as the finals continue to roll today, the crowd is just going to increase in size and continue getting behind these athletes. Well, they're already fired up for the field events. A lot of slow claps, a lot of cheering going on this morning. It was fun to be a part of that in the stands, watching some of the shot put going on as they go to the blocks now. And we're away clean. It's Gladio, your top seed with a good start, but don't discount Eli Etherton on the inside looking good. Gladio looks, oh, we have a fall at the end. Who was that who just went down? That was Hardison of Dubuque that went down. Hardison was making a late charge there when he fell to the track. I thought he was starting to pull ahead. It's taking us a minute to get live results as that was a blanket finish way too close to call. Gladio looked to be out to a great start. Results now becoming official. It looks like it was Gladio. I'm going to wait till the rest of the results populate before I call this, but we do have Gladio in at 796 in a tie with Blake Hardison in second who collapsed down to the track. We went down to the thousandths of a second to call this one. Jake Gladio from Trine is going to be your national champion in the men's 60 hurdles. Blake Hardison in second, also running 7.96, but Dontre Senegal in 7.97, tying for fourth with Jason Agumang. Stu, we are really splitting hairs to get a top four in this one. Holy moly, look at this. 7.953 for Gladio. Here's another look at it. You see Gladio out on your screen, look to be out to a strong start, but Hardison was coming in hot on the outside and it was nearly impossible to tell as he collapses down on the track. Dante Senegal only a hundredth of a second back in third. Absolutely blanket finish there as the difference between first and third is a hundredth of a second. First through fourth. First, first through fourth, excuse me, is a hundredth of a second. In Insane. 7953, 7958, 7961, 7967. Those top four. Yeah, that was an extremely competitive race, and as predicted, I had a very difficult time parsing that one out as they flew down the track. But congratulations to Jake Gladio from Tryon. I'll quickly run you through the rest of the All American positions. Blake Hardison, who took the fall there from Dubuque, is going to be coming through in second place. Dontre Senegal from McMurray in third. Jason Agumang from Rowan in fourth. Eli Etherton, the defending champion, finishes fifth from Nebraska Wesleyan. Kwaku Nkrumah from Rowan in sixth. Azariah Anderson from Trinity out in Texas is in seventh. And Jason Ekior from Bethel is going to be your final All-American in that eighth place position. Wow. Back-to-back -back races. Back-to-back -back insane races. Gets your heart rate going for what's to come here on Championship Saturday. Taking a dive at the line. .005 separated Jake Gladio and Blake Hardison. you got to think that's one of the closest finishes in D3 history with, you know, a hundredth of a second oh, in the top in, four. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it was a, we couldn't even tell. Blanket finish. Yeah, Hardison went down at exactly the right time on your screen one more time that's gladio the national champion there in the checkered jersey in the middle and hardison taking a fall right at the end 
just a split second earlier on that fall and he would have been out of it completely. You could see everybody looking around here. It took a few minutes or a few seconds, I should say, to get the results, results up on the board. Congratulations to the field and the men's 60 hurdles and all of your new All-Americans this year at the 2024 Indoor Track and Field National Championships. We'll be back. And we're back in action here at the Virginia Beach Sports Center in Virginia Beach, Virginia. 2024 Division Three Indoor Track and Field National Championships Day 2 Championship Saturday. We've been treated to great races from the fast athletes in the 60 hurdles in both men and women. Next up on the track are going to be the 60 flat sprints. Women are going to lead things off in that competition, followed by the men, of course. Let's do the action so far been super exciting we were here early to witness some of those field events which we showed uh, recaps of at the top of the broadcast and now getting things underway in a big way out on the track yeah that's exciting first two events and we'll continue to heat up in the 60 we'll take our eyes now to the middle of the track in the men's high jump competition a few athletes are already out of the competition 16 remain as they move the bar to 199 for those who prefer feet that's 6.6 .6 and a quarter inch always a pleasure to give you guys a little bit of field coverage so these athletes some love and we, we talked with one of our correspondents at d3 glory days four-time national champion Sirius robinson about the camaraderie within the field events as you see the women's shot put getting ready to go they got their take their warm-ups off getting ready to take off into the ring but the camaraderie amongst D3 as a whole, but specifically the field events, is something very interesting to see because you're with these athletes for a few hours in the day. It's not like a running event where you're done after 60 sec or six seconds like the 60s are. You're with them for a few hours. You cheer for them. You start your slow clap as we now look into the women's shot put competition. This is Izzy Carroll from UW Lacrosse. Her first throw of the competition. We're starting flight two. So the first, the top 10 seeds here are will, will be shown on camera but Izzy Carroll gets her day started for the Eagles. The Eagles will be in the team hunt as they came in as a top five team. And Stu like you were mentioning earlier these athletes really support each other. You'll see them clapping for each other cheering for each other because sometimes they get left out on an island kind of and so here they are on the national broadcast. We look down at the track now you see the field in the women's 60 Meter Dash shedding their warm-ups, making some final preparations on their blocks. I'll quickly run you through the lane assignments now in this event where we will crown a brand new national champion. Kamaya Wooten, the freshman from North Carolina, Wesleyan, starts things off in lane one. Tina Shelton from Wisconsin Whitewater is going to be to her right in lane two. Kennedy Waite is a name you're going to hear a lot this weekend from Mount Union out in lane three. Lauren Jarrett, the favorite potentially from Wisconsin Lacrosse in lane four. Ken Benjamin from Bowdoin in lane five. Jasmine Wright from Wash U starts on the inside of her teammate Maya Davis, also from Wash U, of course. And then rounding out the field in lane eight, it's going to be Avery Campbell from Albion. Lauren Jarrett in the prelims ran 7.44 second all time behind the one and only Wanalyn Jonathan of UMass Boston back in the day when the Olympian ran D3. So only thing ahead of her on the D3 all time list is an Olympian. Can she get it done? Can she hit 7.40 or faster? Speaking with Kamaya Wooten pre-meet She's eyeing 740 as a freshman. She has confidence within her new training. But this entire field is just absolutely loaded with Kennedy, Wade, Keon, Benjamin. But from a team implication standpoint, it's going to be big for Wash U. Right now they're sitting seventh place with 11 points. They have a lot of entries still to go. So having two in here, I'm sure they're excited. But they need to get some big points. Absolutely guaranteed points in this field of eight. But how high up can you finish? This field is a kind of a fun illustration of 
enduring talent in Division Three, Kennedy Waite, the senior national champion in the 200, and also some freshmen who may not care so much about Division Three history because they're here to make their own statements and get their own careers underway at the national championships. Yeah, it was fun talking with Wooten about you know how she looked into the history books and realized how fast that she stacks up against this field. So we'll see what she can do. And, man, I'm excited. We have two WIAC athletes in here as well, Tina Shelton and Lauren Jarrett. They'll be close by in two and four. Right, and Davis from WashU, the teammates, pretty cool opportunity for them to start right next to each other, just like a practice rep. They were all smiles a second ago, now starting to focus in. Yeah, they'll have three minutes here until the gun. Lauren Jarrett takes off her final sweats, trying to stay warm as possible. You may think three minutes goes by quickly in a normal day, but when you're down there staring down the, staring down the runway, your fate about to be decided in seven seconds, it can last an eternity. Oh, yeah, I mean, Noah, this is you know, completely different from what you do as a pro marathoner, but how nervous are you as you go to the line? I'm sure these athletes are super nervous, but also the nerves remind you that you care. They probably are nervous for every race they do, and to some extent, this is no different. I know, you know, speaking to a lot of these athletes, they're really just excited to be amongst this level of competition and get an opportunity to take the, the very best out of themselves. I do like that WashU gets to stand next to each other in the same, next to each other in the lanes. We've seen WashU have some national meet magic, and can we see more of it today? We saw Emma Kelly just put her team on her back yesterday with a 205 split in that DMR to get them into position from ninth to first. We'll see her later in the day in the 800, but now it's Jasmine Wright and Maya Davis' turn to get some points for the team. Every event that ticks by the team championship picture gets a little bit clearer. But wait until we have the 4 by 4s and all that drama that unfolds. It gets clearer until all of a sudden we have some protests and all that fun oh, stuff. Oh, Stu, we got a lot of drama heading our way, but we are absolutely here for it, and we're here to guide you fine folks out there through it as well. The PA announcer is finishing up announcing the athletes here. A lot of cheers. D3 is well traveled. Seen a lot of different colors in the stands. Some red, some white, some yellow, some purple, some maroon. It'll get loud here in this race. crowd quiets down. These athletes receiving their final commands now. A few more nervous jumps and we'll climb into the blocks to get things going here. The national championship and the women's 60 meter dash. The field is away clean. Very strong start from Wooten, but it looks like Jared on the inside and lane four is out to the early lead. Benjamin can't keep the pace. Neither can wait. It's going to be Jared from Wisconsin oh. across. 741 takes it. Your national champion, Lauren Jarrett, 741 from Wisconsin lacrosse. Wow, almost hits the D3 record, but Lauren Jarrett is ecstatic. Last year, coming in didn't make the final now the national champion she was in control of that race from the gun you see how much that means to her she means to her she improves on her seed time by 0 0.03 seconds 7.44 to 7.41 a monster run for Jarrett from Wisconsin lacrosse you see it again on your screen there strong start on the inside from Wooten but Jarrett got to about 30 meters and never looked back. Well clear of the field. She knew it immediately, claps the hands, and gets a chance to look up at the scoreboard to realize how fast she ran. Just an incredible performance. Let's run you through the rest of the field of All-Americans. Kennedy Waite with a really strong run from Mount Union, 7.55 to take second. Tina Shelton from Whitewater takes third. Kamaya Wooten, the freshman from North Carolina Wesleyan, is going to be there in fourth. 
Ken Benjamin from Bowden in seven six. The teammates from WashU, Jasmine Wright and Maya Davis are six and seven. Avery Campbell from Albion in eighth. Probably not quite the run that the duo from WashU was looking for there, but still points on the board. Quick correction, I said Jarrett didn't make the final last year. She was actually sixth. It was the 200 where she didn't make the final as she talks to our Emily Richards from D3 Glory Days. If you want to see that interview, head to our Twitter account, D3 Glory Days. But Jarrett improves from sixth last year to win this year's national championship. Just a fantastic run from Jarrett. She came in with the pressure of being the favorite on her shoulders, and she absolutely delivered in a statement victory over some incredibly talented athletes. We'll see a lot of these women later on in the meet. Yeah, both her and Kennedy Waite will be back in the 200 later in the day. But before that happens, we have a ton more to go. But man, 741, the second fastest woman of all time in Division Three, improves upon her best performance from yesterday. Yeah, we don't always get to see an improvement in the final over the prelim, but Jarrett absolutely delivered. Congratulations to the women in the 68-meter dash. Turn our attention now to the middle of the track where the men are jumping over the high bar. Checking in on the competition. We're at our third bar of the competition, it looks like, or unless we're still going through the second bar. Yep, we're still at 199, which is six feet, six and a quarter inch. As these men prepare to compete. That's Christian Pfeiffer of Baldwin Wallace getting ready to go. The number two seed in this competition. Looks like 16 athletes still in this competition at the second height. And we saw in the women's competition, not only does it matter how high you go, but how many misses you have as well. We had a four-way tie in terms of the height, but it came down to the misses and who had the least amount ended up winning the competition. We spoke to Christian Pfeiffer on Thursday heading into this meet. He was really confident. Baldwin Wallace is here with a squad of four, and uh, they talked about being in that close-knit community, really wanting to support each other and encourage their teammates. So he's looking for a strong start here. Cleared the first height on one attempt, and he's over his second height, 199, on the first attempt as well. So he's off to a strong start this weekend. Looks pretty effortless for him. I mean, he's very tall. We saw him in person, and he yes. towers over me. So... Got to have a little bit of advantage there as he takes look look at the film from his coach, take some notes and see if he can make some adjustments as the bar gets higher now. Yeah, I saw him kind of shrug that one off. You know, it's it's a great feeling we can get over and not stress about it too much. On the screen now from lacrosse is going to be Nathan Andringa. He was over his first bar quite easily at 194, and he clears 199, 199 excuse me, on his first attempt as well. Moving on now to Adam Beasley. He's a freshman from Illinois Wesleyan. He got over 194 pretty effortlessly on one attempt. And he's over 199 as well. The bar will get raised by two inches. It'll go up to six, eight and a quarter inch. But you gotta get over this first bar. Now from Tufts, Harry Renecker found. This will be his second jump of the day, having cleared his first height on his first attempt. And he's over the bar as we now take a look inside the uh, shot put ring. That competition also underway here at the Virginia Beach Sports Complex. On the camera now is Aubrey Truneman, but now we're back to the high jump. She's currently leading the shot put competition. This is Eli Mikowski, a junior from Nebraska Wesleyan. He's got one strike at this height of 199, so he'll try to get over and join the field in the final. No, sorry, not the final, at the next height. The second Eli from Nebraska Wesleyan we've seen today. Hard-hitting journalism here. As, and he takes his second strike, so he'll get one more attempt at 199. Make a final correction. Kind of caught it with his calves there, so hopefully he can make that adjustment.
Next will be Gunnar Meyer from Central College. He got over height one on his second attempt. This is now his second attempt at 199. Sophomore from Central College makes his approach and clips the bar. That'll be his second strike at 199. He's got one more shot to get over that one. Now on the track and on your screen, the field in the men's 60 meter dash starting to peel off those warm-ups making some final adjustments to their blocks and this is going to be get ready this is going to be a barn burner to do but before we get into it let me just run you through the lane assignments here in the men's 60 meter dash brady fowler from roanoke is going to lead things off there in lane one joey keen from oshkosh in two landon lou from bethel in lane three sam blaskowski from wisconsin lacrosse is going to be in four Davian Willems in five, Jalen Hobbs from Rose Holman in six, Patrick Hurdle from MIT in seven, and Danny Vinson, the senior from Wisconsin Oshkosh, rounds out the field out in lane eight. The fastest man in D3 history will be in the center of your track there in lane four, Sam Blaskowski. 664 is the new D3 record. He set that back in February, and we'll see if he can get a little bit quicker today. He takes on a very strong field, but he's been head and shoulders above the rest. Sam Blaskowski is kind of, well, not kind of. He is the undisputed favorite in this 60-meter heat. We saw him compete at USA's among the USA championships in the whole country amongst the best sprinters in the nation and some of the best sprinters in the world. He was the underdog there. He got to start next to Noah Lyles, but he's the favorite here today at the D3 Indoor Championships. And we got to talk to him about that, and he let us know that the nerves don't come on race day. It's really the week prior, the week leading up to it, I should say. That's when he starts thinking about things. That's when he kind of gets in his head about it. But once he gets here, he just gets excited and gets ready to race. And that's what he loves to do. He loves to race. He's a big team guy. So a big 10 points here gets that momentum rolling for UW Lacrosse. He's got aspirations of becoming a professional athlete one day. And he's doing everything he can to build his resume, solidify his legacy in Division Three to make that happen. But the rest of this field isn't just going to hand it over. No, he's going to go up against three Wyack rivals from UW Oshkosh, and that's going to be big for their team as well, having three guys in this final, getting points for them as they go to their blocks, and you can see the explosiveness from Blaskowski there with that huge leap to get going. Big points for lacrosse too. They brought a giant squad to this meet, but they had some missed opportunities for points yesterday and some key injuries that we'll see play out today. We'll guide you through those later, but Blaskowski definitely with a lot of weight on his shoulders as they crawl back into the blocks. It's a fair start and Blaskowski blasts off, but he's not unchallenged. Jalen Hobbs from Rose Holman looks great, but I believe it's Blaskowski who takes the win. He does 6.68, a huge run from Sam Blaskowski to become your Division Three national champion in the men's 60-meter dash. He held off strong charges from Davian Williams, Willems, excuse me, from Oshkosh in 6.71, a personal best from him, and Jalen Hobbs from Rose Holman in third and 6.74, but Sam Bleskowski just did a Sam Bleskowski thing. Yeah, you kind of saw him interacting with some of his teammates, kind of gave a little shrug, maybe not what he was hoping for. Here's another look at it, and he had some competition around him. I mean, everyone had a great start and got a jump on him. He wasn't leading there until late. Yeah, I think that kind of shrug we saw at the finish line is him just not being super excited about his start. He kind of got lost in the shuffle there in the first 20 meters. 
But by 40 meters, he had hit his stride, and uh, the field just wasn't going to catch him. That's probably the closest he's been in D3 competition recently. So we'll see him later again today in the 200. But adds another national title to his, his resume. You see the All-Americans in order on your screen. Just allow me to run you through them real quick. Sam Blaskowski, your national champion from Wisconsin lacrosse. Davian Willems from Oshkosh, 671 there in second. Jalen Hobbs from Rose Holman in third. Lyndon Liu from Bethel is in fourth. Joey Keane from Oshkosh is in fifth, setting a big personal best in 6.79. Danny Vinson, from, also from Oshkosh, is in sixth. Patrick Hurdle from MIT is 686, and then rounding out your field of All-Americans in the men's 60-meter dash is Brady Fowler from Roanoke. You can see on the ground there, Kennedy Waite of Mount Union in her Normatec boots. She not, has two more races Not to getting go. far from the track. No, nope, she's staying right there watching everything unfold, getting those legs ready to go for two more races. As Blaskowski has another race as well, puts his sweats back on. But yeah, 668, 10 points for lacrosse. But Oshkosh comes away with 15. Yeah, I'm sure Blaskowski wanted more, probably wanted a faster time. But, you know, a win is a win. He, he adds that championship to his name. He gets the points for his team, which we know from speaking to him is an absolutely big deal for him. This is a great shot, too, like all-time greats from Division Three in that shot as we turn our attention back to women's shot put. On the screen now is Aubrey Schooneman of Carthage. She currently sits in second place with a throw of 14.37 meters, getting some pointers from her coach as Lily Meester of Warburg has her third and final throw coming up. She tosses her third throw of the competition. We'll get a reading on that one for you. She's currently sitting in 11th place. Nine go to the final, so she's looking to improve by about seven inches. And she does. She does improve. 13.56. That gets her up to ninth and a uh, provisional spot in the final. Two more athletes behind her to throw as Alexis Boykin, the weight throw champion and the current shot put leader, takes her third throw of the competition. Your current leader looks to have gotten a clean toss there. White flag, her third throw of the day. Currently sitting with a best of 14.79. See what we got on that one. 13.82, so not an improvement, but still feeling things out. She should be safe for a spot in the final. Now, University of Chicago's Molly Lamakis with the best throw so far of 13.47 from University of Chicago, the senior. She'll look to solidify a place in the final with this toss, if possible. White flag, it's a clean throw. Waiting for her mark to come in. Currently sitting at 11th. Can she do what Lily Meester just did? And she does, goes all the way to fourth. 13.95 from Molly Lamacus of University of Chicago. Moves her up to fourth. Provisionally, a spot in the final should be should be pretty safe. So great toss when it mattered most. Now on your screen is another Utica athlete, and that's a Carroll athlete. Excuse me, Vanessa Utenbroke. Currently sitting in fifth with the best so far of 13.95. Also white flag on that one. Just starting to get things warmed up over in the women's shot put. That moves her up to second. Great toss there, 14.42.
Janae Bothy from Wash U in the ring, looking for a big toss. Best so far, 13.05, has her sitting in 18th. See if she can make a jump there. Look to be a white flag throw. She waits for her mark. And she moves to sixth from 18 to sixth. That's huge for Wash U. They're about to lose points, and now they get a woman into the shot put final. That's going to be big for team points. I think we've got to be good luck. It seems like every athlete we've called so far has kind of catapulted themselves into the final flight of the women's shot put. Well, now, Lily, unfortunately for Lily Meester, she's now down to 11th, but at least she got an opportunity to be in there. But right, yeah, you're right. We're just l good luck. We're good luck. We'll follow you guys wherever you want to take us. You, know, you guys are good luck. So. <laughs> Where else can we spread our luck around the field? Right now, it looks like the high jump is moving up. The women's triple jump is going on right now as we speak. Can Victoria Kadiri repeat as national champion? But for now, we'll stick to the men's high jump. That's Evandre Chandler from Olivet, the freshman. He is clear of 199 the bar has moved up to 204 and that's his first attempt at it and he's over cleanly currently sitting in 13th but uh he'll move up after that man we are on fire in the booth here and that moves chandler up to first provisionally uh, of course as the bar is at 2.04 great jump from devondre chandler Wes Keller from Wisconsin Eau Claire hasn't missed yet, and he is clear on his third jump in a row over 204. This man does not miss. Now from Oshkosh, Caleb Cornelius. He's also been over the bar twice cleanly, hasn't missed yet. And he's over once again, 204. Easy work for Caleb Cornelius. He is the number one seed heading into the competition. All you distance fans, stay tuned for the women's mile coming up at 4 o'clock local time. We're on a roll here. On a roll here as Kyle would have sent, excuse me, win is whiskey. The freshman from Oshkosh also goes over. He's three for three joining his teammate up there. But why don't we take a look at Wade Dunkelberger from Christopher Newport. He's two for two so far. Can we make it three for three as he gets the crowd into it? Let's get the crowd going one more time. If you're just joining us, bar at 2.04. He hits the bar. It's his first miss, and I guess kind of our first miss up in the booth as well as Dunkelberger hits the bar on his first strike. Maybe, maybe we can check in now over at the women's uh, triple jump also going on right next to the high jump down there, and that's on your screen right now. Jasmine Clanch of center taking her third attempt of this second flight, currently sitting in fifth. A hop, skip, and a jump and into the sand. All right, Stu, you used up hop, skip, and a jump. You're not allowed to say it again. You used it up on your very first call. I'll have to think of synonyms then to describe the triple jump, and I will do so momentarily. <laughs> Here's Coach Matt Jones of Loris anxiously awaiting Grace Alley's attempt. She's currently sitting fourth. She already has two national titles in this weekend. Stepping on to the runway now is a familiar face for track fans. It's Victoria Kadiri, your current leader at 12.67 from Johns Hopkins. She is no stranger to this runway. Relaxes the shoulders. Wants the crowd to fire her up. That's what you do when you're the triple jump D3 national record holder. 
Your record holder, defending champ down the runway. Hop, skip, jump. You're out now too. Looking to improve on 12, 6, 7. I think she likes that jump. We'll get a reading from it here pretty quick. You can always tell when they feel fired up after that jump, getting some coaching or some tactics from her coach, I should say. All smiles, probably nothing she hasn't heard before. She checks back for a reading. 12 7 threes, so she increases her lead just a little bit there. That's why she liked that jump. That's 41 feet, nine and a quarter inches. Evan Opata from Wash U now coming in. She's third on the runway, looking to get some big points for Wash U. Currently has six for them. Needs about 10 inches or so to overtake second place. Wash U is having a strong first, excuse me, a strong second day here, getting some points. We saw their shot putter move into the final. We saw two of their 60 meter sprinters get points. And now Apata is third. We'll see if she likes that third jump. She's closing in on second place, 12.31. She's back now by about four inches. Chanel Felix from Alvernia, currently in second place in this triple jump competition at 12.41, or 40 feet, eight and three quarters inches, making her third attempt down the runway. Start to slow clap one more time. That looks pretty good. Big jump there from Felix. Kind of a shake of the head there. I love the slow clap. I do too. I'm here for it. Special shout out to the volunteers who have been raking that pit all weekend. You have to imagine that their yards are immaculate. Yet you enjoy that type of volunteerism here at the Virginia Speeds. There it is, the first one. Virginia Beach Sports Center. I jinked us. I said how many times we're going to say Virginia Speech, and I did it already. There's two, I guess, now. On the runway now from Illinois, Wesleyan, that's Imani Ogunribido. Currently 11.63, sitting in 15th. In fact, she bailed out of that one. The white flag is up, though. take you back now to the men's high jump and on your screen now is Jerome Lucky from Moravian. He's a senior currently in 13th. This is his second attempt. Hits the bar at 2.04 so the bar is right where we left it at 2.04. Looks like one. Eight athletes still looking for clearance. Six athletes have already cleared 2.04. About five minutes away from the women's one-mile run. On your screen now, Sean Cochran from St. John Fisher. Took him three attempts at 199 to get over. This is his second attempt at 204. The senior from St. John Fisher clips it with his back. 
Looks like he definitely has that in his legs. He'll get one more shot at it. Making his second attempt at this after going over clean in the first two heights, it's Wade Dunkelberger from Christopher Newport. Makes his approach on his second attempt. Also grabs out with his back. Sometimes it's just a small tweak of form to get these guys over, and it just takes one clearance to advance to the next height. Once again, six athletes over 2.04. That's Pfeiffer, Keller, Winisniski, Cornelius, Chandler, and Mikowski have all cleared 2.04 and the rest of the field trying to join them. Next up from Tufts is going to be, oh, excuse me, I misspoke. Next up from Lacrosse is going to be Nathan and Dreamja. And he's over. He joins the field at 2.04. That was his second attempt at the height. Still 14 guys in the competition. We're just getting started. 14 guys in the competition, seven cleared so far. Adam Beasley from Wesleyan, Illinois Wesleyan, the freshman, looks to join them. He's got only one strike in the competition so far, was over on the first jump at the first two heights. His second attempt at 204. Grabs the bar there, he'll get one more shot at it. Harry Rineker found from Tufts over there on the left side of the high jump bar. We'll look to get over. He goes over clean on his first two heights. It's his second attempt at 204. Makes his approach. And he just barely gets it. You see how close that was. One small adjustment. He should be able to clear this height. How high do you think you can get over? Me? Oh, eight feet. Realistically. Realistically, two to three feet. I don't know if I can do the back bend needed to get over. Not and walk away. Yeah. Anybody who hasn't gotten over at this point now has two strikes, and so we'll make our final round of attempts at 204 is Anthony Meng, the freshman from MIT. Over cleanly in the first two heights. His third and final attempt as he tries to join the field at 207, the next bar height. Anthony Mang makes his run. Oh! Bar bounces off. I thought it might stay up there for a second. Still, great experience for the freshman as his day is done. I'm sure we'll be seeing more of him in the future. He's our first athlete with three strikes. He'll debrief with his coach there. Samuel Plotcher from Martin Luther, also a freshman, will be making his third and final attempt at 2.04. He's over clean when it matters. You see how excited he is about that one. Clears it on his third and final attempt. Seemingly in kind of disbelief at that one. He joins the field at the next height. Another true freshman potentially. At least that's what he has on the screen there for us to look at. Jerome Lucky from Ravian. Senior makes his final attempt. Oh, he clips the bar, almost stays up. 
but it's going to be a foul, and his day is done at these national championships. Maybe stay here for another jump or two, but I'm out of the corner of my eye. I'm seeing the women's field in the mile start tiptoeing onto the track. So let's stay at high jump for one more jump, and then we'll uh, turn our attention back to the track for the mid, excuse me, women's one mile run. This is Sean Cochran from St. John Fisher. His last attempt at 204. He clips the bar. His day at these national championships is done, but congratulations for getting here to Sean Cochran. Bar's at 204. It'll move up to 207 next, and we'll rejoin the competition down the way. But why don't we take a look now at the home stretch where the field and the women's mile is doing their final stride outs. Yep, here we go back on the track and some, th some familiar faces coming back from a double. I'll take you through the entries here. Lexi Fernandez, MIT, Grace Hadley coming off of that monstrous DMR performance where she split 440 to bring home WPI's DMR title. Lucy Gainan from Williams, Aubrey Fisher of Warburg, Priya Parker, Smith College, Amelia, Amelia Lehman, Wisconsin, Oshkosh, Allison Seibold, St. Lawrence, Dale Leonard of Ramapo, Caroline McMartin, Central College, and Hanley, Haley Scheninger, Scheninger, excuse me, of Vassar. Grace Hadley is going to be the big story heading into this final, as she should be. She was our number one seed coming into these championships. I, I believe it was a 445 seed coming in, but where she really showed us what she's capable of was last night in the women's distance medley relay. She brought WPI back from the dead with a 440 leg in the mile to get that national championship. And I mean, we were doing, we were looking back at the results this morning. We couldn't believe how much ground she made up. She had a, we thought maybe eight to nine seconds she made up on the field. And when we spoke th spoke to her pre-race, we kind of asked about how much can you spot the field, and she felt confident. She didn't want to say how much she would spot them, but she did feel confident in her ability. And when asked if she had a faster mile in her legs than her 440 PR indicated, she just looked and said, yes, yes, I do. She is the favorite, but you have to just wonder what that effort yesterday might have taken out of the legs. It's a fast turnaround to be here late last night and then be here early this afternoon. Stu, if there is going to be a challenger to Grace Hadley, who should we look for to give her a run for her money? Yeah, I do like the way Lucy Gaynan ran last night in her prelim. Carolyn McMartin from Central College has been running strong all year. She was part of that Central College DMR last night. But don't count out Aubrey Fisher. She's been an All-American and a national champion before dropping down in the distance. But Ali Seibold could be someone else. I'm basically listening off the, entire field. the entire field. But now, those too. are the few that I like to look at right now. In this competition that will be contenders. We're in a double waterfall start here in the women's mile. Take to the line here at 3 p.m. local time. Grace Hadley is in that front trio there in the white and red and the bright orange shoes. 440 last night the anchor leg of the women's distance medley relay will be interesting to see how she chooses to approach this race tactically. Yeah, the few names that are coming back from that DMR, Lexi Fernandez, Grace Hadley, Aubrey Fisher, and Caroline Mick Martin. Yeah, kind of interesting. They were all in that same race, but they all ran that race very different ways because the, by the time they get the baton, almost 3,000 meters has already gone by. We sort things out one final time and we should get the gun here any second. They take their marks. Underway in the women's one mile run. We'll go around in waterfalls and cut in on, well, the end of this first lap. Dale Leonard from Ramapo starting in with Aubrey Fisher leading that inside crew there. She's been on a tear this indoor season. We'll see how Grace Hadley 
wants to take this. Will she go from the gun here as Allie Seibold starts to increase her lead there on that inside pack? Field merges together, and we'll get a better idea how this is going to play out. Grace Hadley seems pretty content to go straight to the lead. I'm sure the field was kind of hoping she might be a little tired and lay back, but that does not seem to be the case. 36.7 was our opening lap there, and she's already pulling away by four or five meters as we head down the backstretch. Championship record, given how Grace is running right now, is 443.2. So keep an eye on that. 443.2 is a championship record. Obviously within her reach, Aubrey Fisher from Warburg has established herself as a potential pacemaker for the chase pack. I thought she was going to try to chase down Hadley, but Hadley just continuing to press that advantage. Hadley doesn't appear to be tired from last night's DMR and the prelim. Looking great right now as they go down the backstretch. We talked to her about her big weekend, has the 3K later. And she said, I'm not going to sandbag one event just because I want to do better in the other. And clearly, that's not the case right now. Absolutely. And between the two events, this is probably her better shot to win. We came through 409 and 7114, and so we're definitely on record watch here. Grace looks good, but the entire field is still together. Grace Hadley, can she make it two national championships this weekend? So far, looking good through 600 meters. From Ramapo, Dale Leonard takes the chase pack through there all bunched up it's anyone's game back there they're about four seconds back at 600 meters but Hadley continues to pull away chase pack on your screen now being led by Leonard Fisher now dropping back into what is fourth place on the track Grace Hadley continues to push here coming down the home stretch roughly will be right on record pace maybe a little slow for it at 8.09, 2.22, so she settled into a perfect rhythm, and she's just clicking off the laps right now. The field behind her is falling back by about a second and a half per lap. That continues to be Leonard from Ramapo bringing the chase pack through. With Seibold right behind her, Fisher right behind her. A move has got to come out of this pack at some point, but it doesn't seem like they're very interested in chasing down Hadley. Yeah, it's kind of like how it was in the 5K yesterday. No one really wants to make that big, decisive move too early if they don't have to. If they don't have to, as Grace Hadley hits the bell, not the bell, the 1K mark at 2:58. Hadley continues looking unbothered as the field hits the 1K. No change. Leonard still leading them. Cybold on her shoulder. Fisher now kind of moving to the outside, up onto the shoulder of Cybold in second, but. Hadley, on your screen, continues to churn around the track. Her last lap was a 35-7-1, so she's still putting almost two seconds into the field per lap. It's going to be Grace Hadley versus the clock now with 400 meters to go, 334 unofficially. She'll need a 69-68 to break the championship record. To my eye, a slight change of pace there from Hadley, but there's some action now from the pack behind her as Aubrey Fisher from Wartburg has charged away from the pack. I'm not sure she's got enough real estate to get up to Hadley, who goes around the far turn. She'll hear the bell here in about 25 meters. Fisher not totally clean. Seibold behind her. Leonard behind her. Hadley takes the bell. Grace Hadley pushing. She saw the time she needs to beat and continues to go down this blue oval. Grace Hadley versus the track. She anchored last night's WPI DMR team to a national champion, splitting 440. What can she do here in the full mile? Can she earn her first individual national championship title? She's going to. It's just going to be how fast will Grace Hadley run? Grace Hadley, your mile national champion in a championship record. 442-36, your official time in second place. It's going to be Seibold out leaning Aubrey Fisher from Wartburg, 459-7, 459-7. Yes. Personal best for the top four so far. Dale Leonard from Ramapo is going to take fourth, but a championship record for our, excuse me, WPIs. Grace Hadley. And that's second all-time for Hadley. 
She knew she was capable of this after that performance in the DMR, but you always wonder if you can replicate it in the open mile, and everyone's going to wonder until you do it for real. There it was from Grace Hadley, just another mile on the track for her. Just an incredible championship weekend to be Grace Hadley right now. And she called her shot. She said she felt like she had faster time in the legs, and she did just that second all-time for Grace Hadley. We were kind of joking with her when we spoke with her that her best 1,500 meters was 451. And now for a full mile, 109 meters further, she ran 442. She knew she was capable of this kind of performance. She knew she had it in the legs, and that potential has been realized. Congratulations, Grace Hadley, your winner, 442.36, in the women's one-mile run. We'll run you through the rest of the All-American positions real quick. Allison Seibold from St. Lawrence. Out leans Aubrey Fisher to take second. Fisher in third from Wartburg. Dale Leonard from Maripo did a lot of work in that chase pack. Is going to take fourth. Lexi Fernandez from MIT fifth. Priya Parker from Smith College sets a personal best to finish sixth. Amelia Lehman from Wisconsin Oshkosh scores some points for Oshkosh 454. And Caroline McMartin from Central College rounds out the top eight. Your field of all Americans and 454.94. Wow, what a fun race, second all-time. We've had three second all-time performances so far this championships, the mile, the triple jump, the 60 meters. And we're only three events in. Only three events in. I guess on the track, I should say. That was absolutely stunning. We'll be back for the men's edition of the one mile run here in about six minutes, but we do have some time to turn our attention to the track. To the field. To the field, excuse me. To the On field. the track, to the field. From the track. Stu, where, where, what are you interested in watching right now? Let's see what's happening. we got some men's high jump action. But we'll, let's we'll check, go let's to check the out the <laughs> Let's check out the women's shot put. I was looking out onto the track, not onto the screen. We're currently at the women's shot put where Alexis Boykin continues to lead. Alexis Boykin continues to lead, as Stu mentioned, in 14.79. That was her fifth throw, I believe, after fouling on her fourth. That 14.79 came in her second throw. We'll see what the reading on this next one was. She's already won the weight throw this weekend, looking to add another national title to her resume as we now go to the high jump on the track now. Men's high jump, that says Eli McCausey from Nebraska Wesleyan. Barnell, as I promised, it's at 2.07. He's got one strike at this height. Looks to be eight athletes still in the field, so the field of All-Americans is set, but the order is yet to be determined. Mikowski sitting in a provisional sixth place, gets the crowd into it. Here's a replay of Pfeiffer's jump there. The second seed coming into this competition from Baldwin Wallace. Getting the job done early in this competition. Next on to the track here in the high jump is Devondre Chandler. Flips the bar there for his second miss at 2.07. He's currently on a personal best of 2.04, though. So new heights for Chandler, for the freshman. Wes Keller of Wisconsin-Eau Claire making his second attempt. He clips that one. Leclerc needing some points here. It looks like he will get points, but it's just a matter of how many.
Caleb Cornelius of Wisconsin Oshkosh making his second attempt at 207. Ooh, Bale's out there. Hopefully he's okay. Looks to be all right. Maybe missed up, maybe miscounted his steps there. Or tripped, who knows. As on the top of the screen, you kind of see the men's milers coming onto the track. They get going in about four minutes. We'll stay here with the high jump for one, one or two more. As another Wisconsin Oshkosh athlete clips the bar in their second attempt. Next up, as you see there, that's Samuel Plotcher of Martin Luther, the freshman. The men's milers are out on the track taking their final stride outs. So we'll turn our attention back to them. Fireworks in the women's mile, expecting more of the same out on the track in the men's mile as officials start to line them up as we take our final look into the men's high gym competition. Botcher of Martin Luther, the freshman, takes his final attempt at this bar. He clips it. His day has done only one athlete over 2.07 at this point. That's Christian Pfeiffer. But on the track now in the double waterfall formation, your men's milers. I'll run you through lane assignments. Well, not quite lane assignments. I'll run you through the field in this one mile run here. Bennett Booth Ginthy of Pomona Pitzer, Eric Anderson, used to Santa Cruz, Jaden Zwicky, Wisconsin Lacrosse, Johnson Zavala, Brockport State, Mason Shea, Wisconsin Eau Claire, Ethan Dimitrovich, John Carroll, Noah Jorgensen, Central, Will Goddard from Bowdoin, Aiden Manning from Lacrosse, and Ryan Harvey, the junior from Loris, rounds out this field. Bennett Booth Genthy coming in as the top seed. He ran four flat 32, just missing that sub four mark. We asked him if we might see a sub four in this final. He said if somebody else wants to take it. He was runner up last year to Ryan Wilson. Can he get his own national title this year? But he'll go up against a very strong field. Would absolutely love to see a sub four minute mile in this final. There's a bunch of guys in here who are capable of it, but as we know in the distance races, could be tactical. And Off around the track in the double waterfall, Bennett Booth Genthy takes the lead in his little trio, but we won't quite know how things are shaken out until we round the corner. corner. Ryan Harvey gets the backward hat count started at one here from Loris for today's count and Noah Jorgensen of Central looks to gonna be the leader as they come off the break he was part of that DMR squad yesterday as Genthy realizes the train's going and he's gonna attach himself right behind Jorgensen as expected Genthy is not gonna touch the lead but I think he's game to go however fast Noah Jorgensen wants to take us 30.63 through 209, so a pretty honest start. We'll see what we come through 409 in around this corner. Field starting to string out. Yeah, Jorgensen did this yesterday in the prelim. Didn't wait around, didn't make a tactical. He went for it. Shea slotted in there in third. He's looking really strong as well. Wisconsin-Eau Claire doing a lot of the work on in the field this weekend. We'll need Shea to get some points for them today in the mile. Lacrosse really relying on some of its distance runners to score points. They brought a huge contingent of distance runners, Zwicky and Manning, both in this field. But it continues to be Jorgensen leading us through 60.66 through 409. So, Stu, we're, we're flirting with that four-minute barrier right we're, now. We are slightly slowed down there that last 200, but it's a making it an honest race, and it's and it's – Jorgensen is saying, who has the speed in them? I'm going to take us out. Come with me if you want to. Booth Genthy continues to sit in second, just as we suspected. 
he kind of was alluded to the fact that he's going to sit for a while before he makes a big move there. Shea, Anderson, and Harvey round out the top five. I like where Eric Anderson is of UC Santa Cruz, the banana slugs. He's a tall guy and has a big kick. So we'll see as they go through the 800 here. Four laps remaining. Through 809 and 203 flat. So this is well within the legs of this entire field, but also a great opportunity for the kickers to show what they have. It's honest, but yeah, it's going to take a big kick here. So like you said, who has in them? Ryan Harvey has national meet experience here. Can Bennett Booth learn from Ryan Wilson from last year and how he executed his race plan? So we'll see. Three laps remaining. Jorgensen continues to lead. The field content to let Jorgensen have it. They're not going to move up at all. It looks like Zwicky from lacrosse on the outside moving into third. But here comes Bennett Booth Genthy to the lead. A little bit earlier than I might have expected to see him touch the lead. 500 to go when he took the over and now onto the home stretch and he's starting to widen his gap and stretch this thing out with 400 to go. Two laps remain. Two laps remaining, 3.06. Beginning to gap the field as the wiki struggles to hang on. Harvey can't go around either. Eric Anderson goes around the entire crew, letting those long legs unleash down the back stretch. Is it enough to catch Bennett Booth Genthy here? The field is going to rely on Anderson to claw back some of this gap. Booth Genthy is continuing to pull away, but Stu, I'm not counting out Anderson. He looks really good right now. Bell lap as Booth Genthy takes over. He saw his teammates win the cross country national championship. Can he get his own individual national championship today? But Eric Anderson is coming down the backstretch. He's winding, he's winding things up as Booth Genthy heads for home. He continues looking to his right and looking to his left. I'm not sure if he sees Anderson behind him as Anderson churns the arms in the air. He's not going to get there. Bennett Booth Genthy blows kisses to the crowd. He's your national champion in the men's mile for Pomona Pitzer. 4-0-4-2-3. He knew he had it locked up in the last 50 despite a hard charge from Anderson. Wow. And that's his mom there. First time in person his mom has seen him race, at least in track. That's what he told us does Thursday. She a, does she have a credential? Now she does. She's got a national champion son, so who cares? Wow. That was an amazing race from Bennett Booth at Genthy. He took it, he took the lead maybe a little bit earlier than I would have expected, but he built up enough of a lead to where he was never really challenged. But I think Eric Anderson from UC Santa Cruz finishing second deserves a lot of credit for at least making that last lap exciting. But Booth and Genthy in a class of his own for Pomona Pitzer. He gets the title in the men's one mile run. He was the big favorite coming in and did not disappoint. Played with the crowd, showboating a bit, but it was great to see it. We'll Love the celebration as we take another look at it. And here comes the moment where Booth Jinthi decides to stop waiting around. He goes around. Noah Jorgensen there to take the lead, and he wouldn't look back, holding up the number one. Looks to find mom. Blows kisses to his mother, folks. Love it. My heart is melting up here in the announcer booth. Just a, a, another exciting race. Didn't quite get that sub four we were hoping for, but this is championship racing, and that, that just straight up doesn't matter. So, Stu, uh, could you run us through the uh, All-American positions? Yeah, before I do that, I want to shout out Jonathan Zavala. He was in sixth with the bell lap, finished third with a 28-33, the fastest lap of the field in the last one. But behind Bennett Booth Genthy, Eric Anderson of UC Santa Cruz, Jonathan Zavala of Brockport State, Noah Jorgensen of Central, Jaden Zawicki of Wisconsin Lacrosse, Ethan Dimitrovich, John Carroll in sixth, Ryan Harvey in seventh of Loris, and Mason Shea gets one point for Wisconsin Eau Claire in eighth. Wow. Great run, run there as we see the field congratulating each other. Maybe we can jump over to the to the men's high jump where that competition is getting down to the nitty gritty. We'll cr be crowning a national champion over there any moment now as Bo Booth Genthy puts on that shirt. He'll head out for his warm down. Looking now towards the middle of the track, Christopher Christian, excuse me, Pfeiffer from Baldwin Wallace 
has not missed so far in this competition. He's over clean on every single height. Now approaching 210. That's his first miss of this competition. Only two athletes left here, so he's guaranteed one of two spots. Christian Pfeiffer, his first miss from Baldwin Wallace at 210. The other athlete still in the field is Eli Mikowski from Nebraska Wesleyan, the junior. He's had a few more misses, and so if this were to end up tying, he would finish in second on misses. So a lot of pressure on his shoulders to clear the bar here. This will be his second attempt. Another head-to-head -head battle in the field. We've already seen that a lot this weekend, and now it jumps over to the high jump. After Mikowski's jump, we'll pop back over to the track. Women's 400 about to get underway over there. Mikowski jumping potentially for a national title here. Mikowski hits the bar on his second attempt. He'll get one more. It's a two-man battle in the high jump. We'll bring you, uh, Stu and I will bring you the results of that competition when we return. But now it's back to the track where the women's 400, which will be run over two sections, takes to the track in section one. Going to be Zariah Moore from Rutgers Newark, Sarah Schir Schirmerhorn from Hope, Madeline O'Connell from Rochester, in five and Kennedy Waite on the top of the track in six. This is similar to how it played out last year for Kennedy Waite in the 200. She was in that first heat and had to wait and watch to see if she won a national championship and she'll have to do the same today if she's in that opportunity. There's another national champion on the track right now and that's Madeline O'Connell from Rochester who we saw in the pole vault. And she's part of that Rochester 4x4 that won the national title last year, part of that record-setting relay. Can she add another individual title today? Kennedy Waite took second in the 60 earlier, showing, showing some great range. A little bit of a surprise to see her so far up in the 60. We normally think of her as a slightly longer sprinter, or at least I do. So really cool to see her in the 400 and a great opportunity for her to demonstrate some range. Obviously, we don't have eight lanes on the track, and so we run this section in two finals, and so these women have a chance to set a mark, and then section two will have a chance to better that mark. So kind of an advantage going second, but uh, hey, if you put it out of reach here. It makes for high-end drama. Here we go. Heat one of the women's 400 meter final. Away in section one of the women's 400 meter final. We'll stay in lanes for lap one and cut in on the home stretch in lap two. Looks like Moore on the inside making up her stagger early. As they come to the break, it's going to be a mad dash to the bell. You need to have good positioning as Kennedy Waite will take the bell in pole position. Kennedy Waite. Looking really strong here around the top turn. It's O'Connell in her back pocket. Moore fighting for that third spot with Shermerhorn. But here comes O'Connell. Can she get around Waite on the turn? Waite's doing a great job of holding her off. It extends her lead. Kennedy Waite will have the top time potentially headed into heat two. But Kennedy Waite looking good. Can she add to her weekend already? Wow. It's Kennedy Waite taking section one 
of the women's 400 meter final. A great start for her, but now she'll have to sit and wait. Madeline O'Connell in second, Zariah Moore in third. Sarah Schirmerhorn rounds out that section. Kennedy Waite is now on the bubble with 54-72. 54-72 is the time to beat. And that's gonna be a very tough time to beat. You know why? That's why, Stu? Third Excuse me, that's the fourth all-time best performance in D3 history. Fourth all-time in section one of the final. She'll stand by the track and wait on section two. Just really quickly, while we were away, Mikowski missed on his third attempt at 210. He'll finish second. Christian Pfeiffer is going to be your national champion in the men's high jump. But we keep our attention on the women's 400. Section two setting up their blocks now it's going to be Rin Brown University of Chicago Isabella Hogue Nebraska Nebraska Wesleyan Natalia Sawyer from Buffalo State and Lauren Phillips from Johns Hopkins Kennedy Waite setting a high bar but it's hard to relax with this level of talent still on the track she's going up against some national champions on the track already with Hogue and Sawyer as Christian Pfeiffer, look to clear another bar, your high jump national champion. That, that er, crowd eruption, if you heard that. Yeah, no lead is safe with Sawyer and Hogue on the track. So to be a national champion at this event, you need to be an all-time best 400-meter runner in Division Three history. Absolutely. We're going to see that similar dynamic I think play out in a lot of events this weekend you know I'm not sure how much knowing the time even will affect this race it's just all about going as fast as you can yeah you, I think exactly that you go as fast as you can you don't worry about how quick you're going out or what the split is they probably don't even look at the split they just need to go as fast as possible when we interview sprinters on the D3 Glory Days podcast we often ask them about the competition and I'm often kind of surprised by how concerned they how unconcerned they are with the with the competition because it's such a technical event they spend so much time in their drive phase it's staying in your own lane getting the job done section two women's 400 meter takes the blocks <laughs> And we're away in section two of the women's 400 meter dash. 54.72, 54.72 is the time laid down by Kennedy Waite. That's what it's gonna take to win a national championship. Isabella Hogue looks up, looks to make the stagger up on Natalia Sawyer. We head for the break. Hogue looks good. She'll have the inside position potentially, but Lauren Phillips from Hopkins trying to beat her to the pole, but she won't. Hogue takes it now, and it's Hogue against the clock. What does Bella Hogue have in the tank? The 100 meter, the 200 meter champion from outdoors now moving up to the 400. But Natalia Sawyer is starting to pull up next to her. Bella Hogue looks really strong, but Sawyer is not out of it. Moves up to her shoulder now. You see that stride. She's making some time up with every bit of it. Natalia Sawyer looks to move into the lead now. Phillips on her right, but it's Natalia Sawyer. Let's get a reading. 24-8-6, it won't be enough from Sawyer. Sawyer will have to settle for second in the women's 400, and Kennedy Waite, out of heat one, becomes your national champion. There she is with the fans now. She had to sit and wait. The wait paid off. Kennedy Waite, your 400 meter national champion, Stu. Adds another national title to the resume, her fourth of her career. She won the 200 meter last year, and now she's the indoor 400 meter champion. But she's not done yet. She goes back to the event she won last year, the 200 meter. What an amazing battle that was. We saw Natalia Sawyer make a hard charge, followed by Lauren Phillips there. I don't know if we can go back to high jump really quickly 
that competition is still underway. Our national champion is now looking to set some records. As you see, Natalia Sawyer and Kennedy Waite congratulate each other. But this is Christian Pfeiffer, your national champion already in the men's high jump, taking on 2-1-3 or 6-11 and three quarters for you folks at home, just to give you an idea of how high that is. He's going to keep jumping, and he can until he doesn't want to anymore or he hits the bar three times. I mentioned it would take a all-time best to beat Kennedy Waite, and it almost did. Natalia Sawyer will move to sixth all-time. Sixth yeah. all-time, and it wasn't enough today to win a national title. That's the type of competition we have here at the Virginia Beach Sports Center. Sawyer deserves a lot of credit in that race. Bella Hogue looked so strong for about 250, 300 meters. Sawyer battled back with everything she had. Enough for second. An incredible performance. Kennedy Waite is on fire at these championships. We've seen her get it done in the 60. We've seen her get it done now over 400 meters. The range of that sprinter is really incredible. Not sure if Pfeiffer is done or not. He's got the sweats on. He may be, okay. Christian Pfeiffer from Baldwin Wallace, your national champion in the high jump has moved the bar up really high, and it looks like he'll pass on 213. Maybe make another attempt. Yeah, still at 214, he'll make a second attempt there. On your screen now, women's triple jump. That's Grace Alley, has already won two national titles at this competition, currently sitting in fourth place here in the triple jump. This is her fifth event of the weekend. She already won the high jump, won the pentathlon, and she'll be in the 4x4 later on, scoring a bunch of points for the Dewhawks as she talks to the coach, Matt Jones, right now. Now back to the men's high jump. Second attempt for your national champion, Christian Pfeiffer from Baldwin Wallace. This is all bonus at this point. Hits 214. He'll get one more shot. He waves to the crowd, holds up the one more to his coach. Look how relaxed he looks. He just won a national title. How can you not be relaxed? He's, he's hanging out. I believe he'll take one more shot at it. Why not? Getting the whole crowd. He's got... A little bit of a break here on the track, so all eyes on Christian Pfeiffer of Baldwin Wallace. Could be his last attempt of the competition. Has cleared 207 to take home his national title now at 214. The theme this weekend was personal best will help you, and it tied his personal best this weekend to win a national title. Would be great to see him end it on a clearance and maybe keep going after that. His three-minute clock hasn't quite started. He gets some time to relax. As we can maybe go over to the triple jump now. As he claps along with the crowd, Felix is looking to take her next attempt. She's currently sitting in second, 12-4. Ah. She bails out at the last second there. And that was her final approach of the competition. So it looks like she's got second place all locked up. So that means Victoria Kadiri is your national champion again for the eighth time in her career and here in the Indoor Triple Jump National Championship. She'll have a celebratory final jump, a victory jump, if you will. You love to see a good victory jump here in the field events. Victoria Kadiri, the queen of the triple jump, makes her final approach in this competition with the pressure off her shoulders, the championship locked up, her current best jump, 12.73. She gets the crowd pumped up. You know she's not satisfied quite yet.
Kadiri making her last approach in this competition. Ooh. It's fair. That looks to be her best jump. We'll see. It had a quick glimpse there where the sand was. Might have been over 42 feet. She could increase her lead with that jump. We'll get a reading on that one for you. After we get a reading there, we'll turn our attention back to the track. 12.68. 12.68 on the sixth and final jump for Victoria Kadiri, your national champion from Johns Hopkins. Congratulations to her. Great jump. She was really in the driver's seat of this competition all the way through, surprising absolutely no one. Now on to the track. We have the men's 400 meter, 400 meters coming up, and we'll see a crowded first heat. Evan Lauder of Illinois Wesleyan advanced to the final due to interference. So we'll have five men here in this first heat, which is going to be crazy. Five guys going for pole position. Yeah, it definitely makes things a little more interesting. Also means that one athlete in the field is going to miss out on team points as only eight can be an All-American. We'll run you through lane assignments here in section one of two, just like the women's 400 meters. We run two sections. Evan Lauder reinstated due to interference there on the inside lane from Illinois Wesleyan. Josh Jeffess from SUNY Delhi. Samuel Knowles from Widener. Grant Nelson from Bethel. And Amara Conti from Rowan rounds out this super talented field. We mentioned Grant Nelson of Bethel, part of that Bethel 400 meter crew. He was fourth here last year indoors up on that four by four squad. So does have national media experience now trying to go for some individual glory. Coached by gold medalist, Andrew Rock. Hopefully he can channel that gold medal feeling into his legs this weekend. Absolutely, and he is your top seed there standing in front of the number five. But on the inside there in lane three will be Josh Jeffis of SUNY Delhi. He came into the competition with the fastest seat time, 47.05, which is very quick, third all time. But don't count out Amari Conte. He was second last year from Rowan, part of that four by four. He'll be in lane six. Same as the women, these guys will have to wait and see where they finish. Underway in this crowded first section of the men's 400 meter dash. Five athletes, Evan Lauder reinstated due to a protest and interference. As we round that back stretch, we'll get a better idea. Louder is making up that inside stagger. We'll see where they fall. Taking advantage of another opportunity, but it looks like Conte from Rowan will take the bell. Oh, and we have a fall, and it's Louder. It is Louder with the fall. Some more interference from him, but eyes on Conte as he looked incredible through that first 200, but he does not have it wrapped up. So much can change over the course of these 400 meters, Nelson there begins to move up on his shoulder from Bethel. Can Conti hold it? Can Nelson pass? Nelson does pass. He's your winner in section one of the men's 400. Conti loses it just in the last 20 meters or so. 47-5-8. Grant Nelson from Bethel sets the bar for heat number two. Run you through the five finishing there, Grant Nelson. 47.58, Amara Conti from Rowan, 47.74, Josh Jeffis, 47.93, Samuel Knowles, 48.02, and Evan Lauder, who took quite a fall there. Maybe we have another look at that from Illinois Wesleyan, rounds out the top five in 52.25. So that's the mark. 47.58 is the mark. 
Nelson looked really strong there over the last 100. He did. He closed really well. And it's hard to close that hard in a 400, but he made it look pretty effortlessly. And now, not only does he wait and see where he stands, but now he waits and sees where Jacob Parent, his teammate, will stand. Exactly. We'll run you through the field real quick. Lance Jensen is going to be on that inside lane from SUNY Geo. We'll take a quick look at a replay there of the of the finish there. Conti took it out so hard. There's the fall in the second lap as Louder takes another spill in these championships. Tough weekend for him, but it's going to be Nelson from Bethel just edging out. Conti from Rowan punches the air there. He knows he's got the best shot, at least from that section, to win the national title. Finish rounding out the uh, lane assignments here. Let's start over real quick. Lance Jensen from SUNY Geneseo on the in inside lane. Bashir Almarahi from John Carroll to his right. Alexander Rhodes from Puget Sound in lane five. And Jacob Parent, Nelson's teammate from Belleville, has a chance to unseat him for the national title. But either way, a pretty good event for Bethel. Yeah, having two guys in here plus... We will see them in a little bit in the 4x4, but it's a good sign for things to come for Bethel. Andrew Rock, your coach, you got to show out for your gold medalist coach. Alexander Rhodes, the freshman from Puget Sound, comes in with the best seed time from the prelims. He ran 47.62, but it's going to take faster than that if he wants the national title. 47.58, time to beat right now. Personal best for Nelson. And here we go, heat two. Underway, section two of the men's 400 meter final. Lance Jensen on the inside gives chase to the field. Alexander Rhodes looking strong on this back stagger. We're about 25 meters away from cutting in and we'll fight for pole position. Rhodes looking good, but here comes Jensen on the inside. Who will get there? It's gonna be Lance Jensen, the student Geneseo. He'll take the inside. Some bumping going around there, but Jensen continues to lead. But don't count out the freshman, Rhodes. He'll make a move down this back stretch. Can he cut in before the turn? Rhodes still fighting for the shoulder. Doesn't quite have it. Jensen looking really strong, holding him at bay so far. All eyes are on the clock. It's Jensen. It's Rhodes, your top two. Oh! A fall at the line. Too close for me to call. Lance Jensen takes it. Lance Jensen takes it. 46-9. 46.95, it's been corrected to. Lance Jensen wins the national title out of section two with the corrected time, 46.92. And he takes it over Alexander Rhodes, second in 46.97. 46.95, he's the third man to break 47 seconds indoors and becomes third all time. Section two takes one through four in the compiled results there. So there was an obvious fast section in the mid 400. Huge run from Lance Jensen. Took that inside position and defended it to the death. He wins it. 46.95 setting a personal best and big points for SUNY Geneseo. Let's walk you through the rest of the All-American position. Alexander Rhodes, who gave a strong chase there. Before I round that out, let's take a look at the replay here. That's Jensen on the inside, rounding the final turn. Rhodes gaining ahead of steam up to the shoulder, but just can't quite get there as he trips up in the final strides and takes a tumble. Two hundredths of a second away from winning a national title. Lance Jensen, your champion, followed by Alexander Rhodes, Bashir Al-Marahi of John Carroll, Jacob Parent of Bethel, and his teammate Grant Nelson go 4-5. Amari Conti takes six. Josh Jeffess from SUNY Delhi is seventh. Samuel Knowles from Widner is going to be there in eighth. Everybody in the All-American positions setting a personal best or season's best.
Jensen, a part of that 4x4 squad that won the title last year. He had to wait and see. They did it from Heat 1, and now he knows exactly what he did in Heat 2 to capture his first individual, sec excuse me, his second individual title. He was the 400-meter hurdle outdoor champion and now has the flat hurdle champion as well. He can do it from Heat 1. He can do it from Heat 2. We'll step away for just a second here, and we'll be back with the women's 800-meter final. Back with live action of the 2024 Division III Indoor Track and Field National Championships. I don't want to give you whiplash after that men's 400, but now we're back with the women's 800-meter final. Let's run you through the participants in this race. We've got eight of them. Hope Murphy from Baldwin Wallace, Ali Sarusi from Wash U, Emma Kelly also from Wash U. Big opportunity for Wash U in this race. Ellie Rising from George Fox, Megan Bell from Rochester, Anissa Ide from Bethel, Denise thornton Philyaw from Goucher, and Kayla Cass from Stockton rounds out this field of eight. This is a strong field led by Emma Kelly. We saw her yesterday in the DMR, split a 205. So she'll look to add to that to this weekend. She brought her team from ninth to first in one leg, but she'll have some strong competition ahead of her. Underway four laps of the indoor track. How fast can Emma Kelly go? She's the favorite in this race, but no one's going to hand it to her. And she's out quick, followed by Hope Murphy on the outside. You kind of see it's strung out on that second alley there on the outside. We'll see how quick this will be. Two ways to run the 800. There's the hard charge from the front and then there's the tried and true sit and kick but it's pretty clear what choice emma kelly is going to make as she hits the gun first 430.49 for emma kelly followed by hope murphy and ellie rising in two three but emma kelly already putting some serious daylight into this field emma kelly could challenge this national record set by emily richards the championship record set by Esther Seelan, 205.8. Keep an eye on the clock as she's going to be running by herself. But can Hope Murphy come back? Hope Murphy is still charging, hoping to gain some distance back. We'll get a 400 split from Emma Kelly here right now. 400 in 101, 20, 29, 61, 29. The Wash U senior continues to burn around the track. No change in the chasers behind her. Hope Murphy continuing to hold down that second place spot, but Ellie Rising now moving up onto her shoulder. It's Ali Sarusi there, the Wash U teammate, fighting in fourth to bring some big points to this squad. Keep an eye on the clock, 132 at the bell. Emma Kelly has been a national champion here last year, did it outdoors, looking to add a national record to her resume as she goes off to the University of Wisconsin for her grad year. But it's the Emma Kelly show from Wash U. 50 meters to go. What does she have left? 205 is the time she needs to beat. Keep an eye on it as she pushes down the home stretch. She's going to add to her legacy. Emma Kelly sets the new D3 800 record. That's a new record for Emma Kelly in emphatic style. Hands on her head in disbelief. 204.13. 204.13 officially for Washu's Emma Kelly. She put an astounding amount of distance on an extremely talented field. Wow, she ran a solo 800 meter national record by herself. 204, incredibly insane. You kind of felt this was coming for a while for Emma Kelly. She's run multiple 205s and finally dips under to set the new national record without question, a championship record and whole division record for Emma Kelly. Absolute clinic there in 800 meter running. Pretty even splits there. Just a new record for Emma Kelly. An astounding run over Hope Murphy who finishes second in 2.099. Ellie rising in 2.10.17. Kelly's teammate, Ali Sarusi from Wash U sets a new personal best in 2.10.35 to finish fourth. 
Thornton Filioff from Goucher finishes fifth. Megan Bell from Rochester in sixth. Anessa Hyde from Bethel finishes seventh. And Kayla Cass finishes eighth, bring some points home to Stockton. But Emma Kelly is going to be the story here. This is what people are going to remember. 204-13 for Kelly. Wow. Incredible. We see a replay here. Just an astounding amount of distance over the field in such a short time. We see her cross the finish line with eyes on the clock. Kelly versus the blue track here at the Virginia Beach Sports Center. An incredible run that, as Stu mentioned, a lot of people knew has been coming for a long time. She's been knocking at the door her third national title. Well, I guess her fourth if you count the DMR, which we will. Now she caps off her indoor career with a national record. Running that by herself is absolutely insane. The 800 is one of the hardest events, and to do that by yourself is simply incredible. I just couldn't believe how much track distance opened up between her and the field. Next on the track is going to be the men's version of the 800-meter run. That will be coming your way at 5.05 local time. So Stu and I are going to step back for just a minute, and we'll be back to set up that race and give you a little update on the, on the team standings overall as we progress in this national championship. So we'll be back. This is NCAA Indoor Track and Field National Championships live from the Virginia Beach Sports Center. Welcome back to the 2024 Division Three Indoor Track and Field National Championships. This is Championship Saturday, and we are cruising through the finals. We just witnessed a new Division Three record in the women's 800 meters from Emma Kelly, 204.13, and we'll be back with the men's edition here pretty quickly. But before we do that, let me give you a quick lay of the land in the team competition in on the men's side with 13 of 17 events scored. Wisconsin Oshkosh edging out Wisconsin Eau Claire 45 to 41. Wisconsin Lacrosse currently sitting third with the other Wisconsin Whitewater School, Wisconsin School, Wisconsin Whitewater there with 24 points. On the women's side with 14 of 17 events scored. Loris has an eight point lead over Wash U 48 to 40. Johns Hopkins currently sitting in third on the back of Kadiri's performances this weekend with 33 points. And MIT currently in trophy contention with 30 points. A lot of points still be still to be awarded on the track. We can look forward to the 800, the 200, the 3,000 meter run, and then we'll wrap things off with the 4x400 four four meter relays. This championship has really lived up to the hype so far. Records and personal bests have been coming thick and fast as we expected. This track is fast. We just saw a national record in the women's 800, and I'd expect we can see records challenged in the events moving forward here. And our day's wrapping up here quickly. We only have three events left on the women's side. The men's 800 here coming up shortly, so they'll have four events left as Noah took you through the team scores, but this is getting pretty crazy. Absolutely. It's a big battle for the state of Wisconsin right now on the men's side as we see four of the Wisconsin schools battling for trophies. We know lacrosse brought a huge squad here and a lot of points opportunities, but some misfortune for lacrosse yesterday as we saw some key injuries and a couple of performances that maybe weren't quite up to their expectations. Hopefully you guys on the broadcast can hear the crowd going wild here as on your bottom of your screen you see the men's 800 field take one of their final runouts before they're loaded into two waterfalls. This is going to be an event that's just wide open. It's going to be fun to see 
no reigning national champion in the field, but we do have a few national champions in their career. Sam Verkirke, an outdoor 1500 meter champion. Sam Laneza was on that Lynchburg DMR team that won last night, and Wisconsin Lacrosse is gonna need a big show out of Kale Showman. You see that line of red down at the bottom of your screen. Those are Lynchburg fans. Lynchburg, obviously, here in Virginia, and they've brought out a huge contingent to cheer on Lynchburg. And Sam Lineza, who was part of that just incredible men's DMR last night, Hunt bringing it home for the win for their squad. But let's keep our attention on the men's 800. I'll run you through the field. Kel Showman from Wisconsin Lacrosse. Caleb Correa of John Carroll, Sam Verkirke from Wisconsin Eau Claire, Sean Hendricks from Rochester, Braden Giles from Wisconsin Stevens Point, Sam Lanaza from Lynchburg, Chase Upman from Carthage, and Trevor Richwine from Dickinson, rounding out this field of eight. We saw some jostling around during those prelims in the eight, the mile, the 400. So when you have eight, eight guys in the waterfall, things can get pretty hairy. So we'll see if they can stay up. A lot of them are tall and need their stride length. So we'll see if everyone can stay up in this four lap race. Caleb Correa from John Carroll, the junior, he comes in with the best time in the prelims, 150.74. But we know there are legs in this final that are fully capable of dipping under that 150 mark. We saw two athletes dip under running 149 in the build-up to today's national championships and it's probably Stu I'm going to say it's going to take a sub 150 to win this race today yeah showman was saying he thinks it can do that if, if, if someone takes it out away clean and the men's 800 will go four laps around this indoor track here in Virginia Beach people trying to get their position early on that inner alley there as they took the first turn Caleb Correa on the top looking around to see what happens we'll see if this turns tactical as the Lynchburg crowd is loud here today as Correa takes the first lap in roughly 26 seconds Correa threw in pole position as showman from Wisconsin lacrosse slots in there in second Lynchburg in a good position the hometown fans are going to will them home 26-7-6 first 200 it doesn't seem like the pace is out of anyone's wheelhouse right now showman maybe wants to take things up a notch yeah kale showman wanted this to go fast he told us that on thursday and now he's taking it into his own hands kale showman two laps to go 55 point at some point here in the race will anyone be come up to his shoulder correa relinquished that position to showman but it went absolutely nowhere he's in second moves to the outside of lane one and a look to get up on the shoulder they're pushing Correa and Verkirke, but here comes Sam Laneza from Lynchburg. As they come to the bell, Kale Showman continues to lead and he pours it on. Showman takes two meters over the field. Correa hears the bell behind him and gives chase. Verkirke from Eau Claire cannot get around in the second, but Showman is unchallenged down the backstretch, but Correa will not give up. He led the early stages of this race. They were 55, 7, 3 through 400. Let's see what he can close in. Showman continues to run, but Sam Verkirke is making up ground with every stride. It's Verkirke. It's Showman. Verkirke on his shoulder. Oh! Up the line. Too close to call. Showman and Verkirke shoulder to shoulder, and I guarantee you we will show it's you. It's Showman! A, show you a replay of that. It's Kale Showman from Wisconsin Lacrosse who gets the nod in a photo finish in a personal best of 150.56 over Sam Verkirke, who closed in a 26.61 over the final 200 meters. Showman points to the sky. He did the hard yards in that men's 800, and he's rewarded with a national championship. That's deja vu of the Wyack 800 meter final. They both dove in the conference final, and those two go one two at the national final. Wow. Not, I think much, not much more Vakirki could have done there. Running along in third place, he appeared to almost be dropped there on the third lap, but ran such an inspired 
last 200 to get onto Showman's shoulder. But the show is Showman's today. We'll take another look at it. Eyes on your screen now as Showman makes his initial pass of Correa into the lead. And he wouldn't look back until he felt Vakirki on his shoulder in the last 20 meters. They're neck and neck too close to call. You saw them just go full on Superman dive at the line. Showman gets that inside shoulder stuck out just far enough to edge Verkirky by three hundredths of a second. Insane. And putting his body on the line for the team, Kale Showman comes in here and puts on a show for the crowd. That's the last time we're gonna that's the last time we're gonna do that. That's it's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just an amazing eight hundred both 800s, men's and women's, were amazing races in two totally different ways. We saw Emma Kelly take it from the gun. We saw Showman dive to the line. You see him there scoring big points for lacrosse, and the team really loves that. Let me run you through All-American positions and the men's 800-meter run. Kill Showman takes it for Wisconsin lacrosse, 155-6 in a dive over Sam Vakirke from Wisconsin-Eau Claire in 155-9. Caleb Correa did a lot of work in that race, and he's rewarded with a third-place finish for the John Carroll squad. Sam Laneza makes the Lynchburg faithful proud with a fourth-place finish. Trevor Richwine from Dickinson in fifth. Braden Giles of Wisconsin Stevens Point in sixth. Sean Hendricks from Rochester takes seventh. And Chase Upman runs out your field of All-Americans for Carthage in a 156-2-5. Incredible showing here. Whew. Got to calm down after we gotta that calm one. Down. Let's, but as we did yesterday, Stu, let's, you and I and all the folks at home just take a nice deep <sighs> breath. And we'll turn our attention to the track next for the women's 200 meter dash. We'll have a few minutes here as real, we real start quick, getting... I'm interrupt you here. No, real quick. That's huge for lacrosse because they were down by 15 points and 11 points. They add 10. They'll get two back on Eau Claire. So unofficially. Eau Claire will be leading with 49 points over Oshkosh with 45, and Lacrosse has 40 as we head to the 200. Lacrosse will have Blaskowski, Oshkosh will have London Little, and then the guys from Lacrosse will be in the 3K. So we're going to come down to the 4x4 again. That's the plan. That's the drama. It builds with every event. But Showman doing his part there. Those, those two hash it out. <laughs> They'll remember that race for the rest of their lives. Just you, you saw that moment in his brain where it clicked that it was going to take a dive. And it's, he instigated the dive almost a little too early. Well, he did that in conference and it won, so don't break what, what works. Absolutely. We can have a whole debate on if diving is actually any faster, but, you know, who cares? It gets the job done. Showman, your national champion in the men's 800-meter run. Oh, look at the scrape there on his elbow. Yep, he'll be taking that one home with him. A little bit of track burn on the elbow of the of the national champion. Verkirky is just wondering why they had to do that. <laughs> His shoulder, you see a little banged up too. But that's what giving it your all looks like. And that's great for Verkirky too. After he won that 2022 outdoor 1500 meter final, we didn't really see him in a lot of national meets. I think he went through an injury. So to be back, be healthy, and now be a runner up in the 800 shows some resilience for Verkirky, who I think had a hockey background, not a traditional running background like a lot of these guys do. So he's used to taking some hits. Exactly. Final runouts for the women's 200 meter dash taking place. See them at the top of your screen now in front of a great crowd here at the Virginia Beach Sports Center. Got the crowd filing in on both sides. It's been such a great atmosphere this weekend. Really thankful for all the fans who came out. Thankful for all you folks at home who have been riding along with us. We've got a great crew here in Virginia Beach bringing you awesome shots of all the action. So we're really grateful to the whole team here. The women's 200 meter dash is going to be run over two sections just as we saw in the 400 meters earlier. So these women on the track now get a chance to set the bar really high. Nicole Stewart 
is going to be inside on lane three, in lane three, excuse me, Lauren Jarrett from Wisconsin Lacrosse to her outside, Lori Matthews from Stevens in lane five, and Kian Benjamin from Bowdoin out in lane six. 24-4-4 from Laura Matthews from Stevens. Top seed from the prelims going into this heat, and it is Laura Matthews, the athlete to watch here. But Ken Benjamin, who we spoke to earlier, also has a personal best of 24-3-5, and she's going to be definitely giving these women a run for their money. Yeah, and also I think you mentioned earlier Nicole Stewart in here. Right now, WashU is down by eight points to Loris, and neither team has anyone in the 3K, but both squads will be in heat two of the 4x4. So right now, WashU Nation needs Nicole Stewart to get anything roughly close to four or more points to give WashU a chance. You'll see her in lane three. This 200 is a tough one to call as they stay in their lanes, and they won't really get a sense of where everybody is until we enter that final 50. So there's going to be fireworks here at the Indoor National Championships. They received their final instructions. Benjamin doing some last-second high knees. will crawl into the blocks and get things underway in this final sprinting, final individual sprinting event of these national championships. Sue, who you like here? Lauren Jarrett. Look for Lauren Jarrett. 60 meter champ. Their way, that's Jarrett in four. Your 60 meter champ as they round the top turn. Benjamin leans in and then opens up her stride on the back stretch. Matthews giving chase as well. No one obviously making up the stagger to this point, but there's Jarrett. There's Matthews. Matthews makes up the stagger on Benjamin. We're even coming in. Matthews looking amazing, but Benjamin up on her shoulder. Matthews takes heat one. Matthews 24-22 to take heat two, and that right now is fourth all time. Fourth all time for Laura Matthews. You saw that hand immediately go over her mouth in disbelief. She takes down a star-studded section one. Laura Matthews 24 Two two twenty four two two. You got to better that if you want to win a national title. Benjamin in second, twenty four three one. Jarrett in third, twenty four eight. Stewart twenty four eight five. Last year, Kennedy Waite won the national title, running twenty four thirty one. Right now, Laura Matthews has a faster time than that, but on the track now is Kennedy Waite by a tenth of a second, a huge margin in sprinting. Laura Matthews surprises a lot of people with that performance lays down the gauntlet for section two it's your defending champion on the track now kennedy wait let's run you through lane assignments megan garrett gustavus adolphus tina shelton wisconsin whitewater kamaya wooten in lane five the freshman and kennedy wait on the outside in lane six make up section two just hearing from my co-host Stu here that we're looking at a big disqualification in the men's 800. Just to give you a quick news bulletin that their showman from Wisconsin lacrosse has been DQ'd. That's all we know right now. We'll come back with you with information as we hear it. But for now, we're going to focus on the women's 200-meter dash. Wow, that's big for the team battle. They're now down by 21 points to Eau Claire and 15 to Oshkosh. But now, you're, as you said, we have a national title race in front of us. Stu, I was, I'd ask who you like here, but Kennedy Waite has got to be the favorite. She showed us not only last year, but today that she's in the form of her life, second in the 60, champion over 400. We're now meeting right in the middle, but it's going to take 24-2-2 or faster to win a national. Well, faster than 24-2 yes. to, to win a national title. She'll have to deal with Kamaya Wooten, the freshman sensation who's run 24-19. Can she match or do better than her seed time?
up and away in section two of the women's 200 meter run. It's Waite at the top of the track, your defending champion, chased by Wooten, the freshman, but on Wooten's inside, it's, it's Shelton looking really strong, making up the stagger. Here they come around the turn, didn't quite get there. Kennedy Waite looking extremely strong on the outside. Wooten up on her shoulder. It's Waite with a step on Wooten heading into the final stretch. Waite wins the section unofficially. 24-10. 24-10. Waite wins it. Waite wins it second all time. Kennedy Waite, her second national title in what, an hour? Waite wins it emphatically. We looked at that 24-2-2 from Laura Matthews in section one, which would have won the championship last year that Kennedy Waite took home. Kennedy Waite said, yeah, 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 I see it, but I've got something in store for you. 24-10, Mount Union's Kennedy Waite continues to head up the all-time list. She's starting to show some emotion now that she's racking up national titles. Wow, back-to-back -back national titles, not only in events for her, but in years. Kennedy Waite doing it all, putting Mount Union on her back, scoring 28 points by herself. What an incredible show from 60 to 400. Two individual titles. We'll take another look at that. Wooten made a hard charge around the corner, but Kennedy Waite leaning back there, powerful, striding down the home stretch, takes it. I didn't want to call it because it was popped up on the clock. I almost didn't believe it. 24-10, a personal best, moving up the all-time list. Kennedy Waite, your national champion in the women's 200. Here's how it all went down. Kennedy Waite, your champion. Laura Matthews, the winner from Section 1, finishes second overall in 24-2-2. Wooten, the freshman from North Carolina. Wesleyan takes third in her inaugural national championship over 224-2-4. Deanne Benjamin from Bowdoin looked really strong, setting a personal best, 24-3-1. Tina Shelton takes fifth for Whitewater. Lauren Jarrett scores points in sixth for Wisconsin Lacrosse. Megan Garrett from Gustavus, Adolf Gustavus Adolphus, excuse me, there in seventh. And Nicole Stewart from Wash U rounds out the field, finishing eighth in 24-8-5. Wow. Second all-time. We're getting all-time bests here at the D3 championships and they keep on performing. This is absolutely incredible. This is what you want to see at the national championship. We talked about this yesterday, that it took your national, it took your very best, your personal best to get to these finals. Do you have more in the tank? And these athletes are showing that they do. They're showing us over and over again. We've got a little time here before the men take to the blocks for their section of the, of the 200 meters. So we'll step away for just a minute here from the Virginia Beach Sports Center. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Virginia Beach Sports Center here in Virginia Beach, Virginia for the indoor track and field national championships here in Division Three. Just saw an amazing competition play out over the women's 200 meters as Kennedy Waite defends her title in 24-10. Amazing run for her. We've got the men coming up here in a few minutes, but I want to first bring you some news. In the men's 800, we saw Wisconsin lacrosse showmen dive across the line to take a huge win and huge points for Wisconsin lacrosse, but now officially in the results, he's listed as a DQ, and that has huge implications for the Wisconsin lacrosse squad. Yeah, right now they're down by 15 points to Oshkosh, 21 points to Eau Claire as they head into this men's 200 meter. That mean, They have two listed here. Will Schroeder, we saw Schroeder, Schrader, excuse me, Luke Schrader, have a few injuries yesterday, but now with that news of Kale Showman, will he go to the line to get at least a point for this team? Because right now, every point matters. Stu, I did see Schrader earlier walk in on crutches. Walking on crutches, so maybe he will not be on the track. So that means they need a big day from Sam Blaskowski, and they have to rely on their five excuse me, there are four athletes in the 3K because, well, they do have a 4x4 as well. So points are on the table. Eau Claire, here's the thing. Eau Claire has a 4x4. Oshkosh does not. 
and Eau Claire and Oshkosh do not have anyone in the 3K. So right now, Wisconsin Lacrosse has to go get every single point possible to give them a shot at a national title. They wanted to win, they wanted to win by a lot, but now they're in a position of just desperately fighting for every point they can. Goes to show you that anything can happen in sport, and so we'll have some high drama as we progress through these national championships. We're all done on the field, so it's only track events here on out. We still have the men's section of the 200 that I promised you guys before we took a break. After that, we'll settle things in the distance side. 3,000 meters will play out for men and women, and then we'll wrap things up here at the 2024 championships with the 4x400. Four Stu, this is flying by. Yeah, I can't believe we're at the 200 now. Like I, We started and now we're over? What the heck? It's nuts when you see performances like these, enthusiasm like this, and a crowd like this. Shout out to the crowd. I know they're probably not listening, but uh, their enthusiasm has been awesome. And just such a fun time here at the Division Three Championships. The level continues to be raised. The bar continues to be raised every year. And it's just such a pleasure to be a fan of this sport. While we have you, I think, uh, you know, Stu and I, I'll just remind you that we co-host a podcast called Division Three Glory Days, as well as a whole website and social media, Empire, where you can follow along with all the D3 news. And so if you're curi curious about what you saw on the track today and want to learn more about it, go ahead and type in D3 Glory Days into your internet browser and you'll be led right to us. I just want to give a huge shout out to the Virginia Beach Sports Center. This place is amazing. They're doing a great job hosting a fantastic event. Very efficiently, they have multiple runways, multiple pits for pole vault and high jump. I'm having a blast. Great area for the athletes to warm up as well. And hope to see us back here in the future at the Virginia Beach Sports Center. As now onto the track. Hey, he is there. Luke Schrader on the track. We'll see what kind of effort he gives, knowing that lacrosse needs points. Will he jog? Will he go full effort given what we saw happen to him yesterday, falling in the hurdles, coming up limp after the 200, but now he's here knows, knowing that lacrosse needs points. I just want to reiterate one more time that I saw this man walk into the building on crutches just a couple hours ago. He was putting no weight on it. We'll show you the fall one more time. This happened in the prelim yesterday. We weren't sure if we were going to see him in this prelim at all. You saw him cross the line there, and then immediately after the finish, pulls up right there. You see him hop, and immediately he's not putting any weight on that taped up left Achilles. Goes down on the track. We assumed his championship was over, but here he is, off crutches, into section one of the final. If he finishes, he scores a point. But he's oh, he's he running a, out of he's, he's running out of the block box. Start. You can see him there on the top of your screen in lane four, taking an honest block start. He's running out of the blocks. If he gets around the track, this will be an incredible comeback from injury for Schrader. Let me run through the lane assignments now before we get too carried away. It's Jordan Brown from Olivet in lane three. Luke Schrader, who we've been talking about from lacrosse there in four. London Little from Oshkosh in five. And Jake Gladio on the outside in lane six. We talked a lot about how much team means to Luke Schrader. We interviewed him. He, that's all he spoke about was the team. And now this is personified sportsmanship, personified being a team player. We know he's in a lot of pain be really interesting to see how this plays out but we'll continue talking about Schrader but there's other men in this field Stu who should uh, we be looking out for at home yeah lane six Jake Gladio already won a national title here this weekend in the 60 hurdles but also look for London Little of Oshkosh I think he realizes what's at stake for his team and Oshkosh needs these points reminder this goes over two sections just like all the sprinting events we've seen today these gentlemen have an opportunity to put a time out of reach of section two the compiled results will reveal your national champion we'll quiet down for a second stand by for the start of the men's 200 meter dash
underway in the men's 200 meter dash. Gladio on the outside gets a strong start. London Little looks to make up the stagger over the first turn. Schrader, what Achilles. He's moving down the back stretch, looking amazingly strong. Little continues to eat up ground on Gladio. We come around the turn. It's Little ahead of Gladio. Schrader still on the inside, looking amazing. It's Little at the line. Schrader dives. This man will do anything for a lacrosse. London Little takes it 21-4-7. Luke Schrader throws his crutches to the side and once runs 21.53 in a dive. I can't believe what I just saw. Wow. Sam Blaskowski, your 60-meter champion, helps his teammate up. London Little there, 21-4-7, sets the mark out of reach. Schrader can't walk off the track. Jake Gladio is... I'm stunned. I'm stunned too. Jake Gladio leaves something to be desired there. Third in his seat, 21-5-6. We'll take another look at it. Little emphatically wins section one in a lean. Schrader supermans the last two meters. I don't know if I could ever do that. And he is a superman carried off the track by his teammates. I'm kind of emotional <laughs> watching that. That, that. that was amazing. We, we see him uh, off screen to our left here. Just, uh, I mean, he can't walk. He's, he's being carried off the track. But London Little in the pole position now with section two on the track. Little has got to feel good about his chances of bringing more points to Wisconsin Oshkosh. That's a big PB for Little, by the way, 21-4-7. Now on the track, Heat 2, they know exactly what they need to do, and Blaskowski just saw his teammate give everything, and we expect to see the same from Sam Blaskowski, and we have a great matchup in store for you. It's Blaskowski and Eric Gregory. Blaskowski is second all-time in the indoor two. Eric Gregory is third all-time in the indoor two, and guess what? They line up 5-6. If you're just joining us and you don't know who Eric Gregory is, he goes to Gallaudet, the school for the hard of hearing and deaf. He has set numerous records for deaf athletes. He won the outdoor 400 meter this year, looking to take acclaim at the indoor 200 meter race. Lane assignments quickly for you. Brady Fowler on the inside lane from Roanoke. TJ Clayton from Rhodes on his outside, Eric Gregory who Stu just mentioned from Gallaudet in lane five. And to his outside, Sam Blaskowski from Wisconsin Lacrosse, who just saw his teammate literally lay it on the line. you got to know he's feeling inspired. But the folks at home could not hope for a better matchup coming out of lanes five and six. Gregory's going to be looking to make up the stagger, and you know they'll see each other on the far turn. Stu, you have to imagine that this matchup, could, this matchup could propel them to a really special time here. Only one man has broken 21 seconds indoors, and that's Shaq Traore. We're up and away in section two of the men's 200-meter dash. Blaskowski blasts off in the outside. Gregory looking to make up the turn. Clayton and Fowler also moving well on the inside. Here comes Gregory. He cannot get to the shoulder of Sam Blaskowski yet, but there he is, Blaskowski and Gregory. Neck and neck, Blaskowski. Gregory leaning at the line. It looks like Blaskowski will take it. We'll get you an official time. It's, it's sub Blaskowski. 20. It's sub 21, Blaskowski. They both break 21. Sam Blaskowski takes it in 29-3. He joins Eric Gregory in the sub-21 club, 20.96. The only three men to ever go under 21 in the men's 200 in Division Three. The lacrosse athletes on the track, Leskowski just had an incredible day. People were doubting his 200 ability coming into today, but he silenced the haters in a big run, a national championship. 29-3, Stu. Prior to last year, there hasn't been a man in D3 history, at least on the indoor track, to break 21 seconds. Last year, Shaq Traore shocked everyone by winning the D3 national meet. Well, not shocking by winning, but shocked by running 2072. And now two men add to that sub-21 list as you see them both going for it. Blaskowski and Eric Gregory two of the fastest men in Division Three history.
we thought that 5-6 lane matchup was the perfect situation to see an amazing time. And boy, did those two athletes deliver big points for lacrosse in this competition. Before we continue breaking this down, as you see the two teammates hugging each other, let me just run you through the field. Blaskowski, your champion, 29-3. Eric Gregory, one of three men to ever break 21 indoors in Division Three, sets a huge personal best, obviously for Gallaudet. London Little from Oshkosh takes it, takes third from Section One, 21-4-7. Luke Schrader from crutches to fourth place in the country and All-American for Wisconsin Lacrosse scores big points. Brady Fowler from Roanoke in fifth. Jake Gladio in sixth. TJ Clayton from Rhodes in seventh. Jordan Brown from Olivet in eighth. Man. I can't believe what I just saw. <laughs> I'm shocked. I usually have something to say, but I feel speechless. Two men going under 21 seconds. We saw Emma Kelly break the 800 record. We're seeing barriers being broken here in all distances, in all events here at the national championships. When you see that matchup like Blaskowski and Gregory, you kind of wish we could hand out two trophies, right? I mean, just, just amazing and uh, man, I already can't wait for outdoors. The 200 has been kind of a rotating cast of characters over these last few, few years. We've seen just some amazing rivalries, some historic greatness and it just keeps on, it just keeps on keeping on, Stu. D3 sprints on a different level. We talked to J.P. Vaught, a national champion from years past. He says he can't be slow in D3, and clearly that's the case. He can't be slow in D3. It is ever-changing. Three men now, all-time, under 21 seconds. Blaskowski and Eric Gregory renaming the record book. We will definitely miss these guys one day. We have another year of Sam Blaskowski. We believe Eric Gregory is a senior. Ugh, just amazing, just amazing. All right, putting a pin in the talk of the men's 200. For now, we turn our attention back to the distance side of things. Approaching the track now from the outside is gonna be the field and the women's 3,000 meter run. Yeah, again, another stacked field here. We saw the women's 5K unfold yesterday, and the same characters are going to be out in this race as well. A few national champions, though, will be in the race as we have Grace Hadley on the track, the mile national champion, ready for her fourth race of the weekend. Hope Murphy, your 800 meter runner up on the track in the 3K as well. It's gonna be a fun one. Natalie Batetti, the anchor for CMS in this. I'll run through the whole field instead of just naming people I see. I was gonna make you wait for the first lap to see if you could do it. Uh, that, nah, just do it now. All right, Faith Duncan, Wilmington, Natalie Batetti, CMS, Allison Seibold, St. Lawrence, Grace Hadley, WPI, Michaela. Belton, Wisconsin Stout, Lexi Brown, Warburg, Hope, Murphy, Baldwin Wallace, Bridget Hanley, Emery, Helen Cross, Carlton, Evelyn, Battleson, Gunkel, U Chicago, Janie Cooper, NYU, Fiona Smith, St. Benedict, Kate Cochran, NYU, Aubrey Fisher, Warburg, Dan Era, Cologne, Molinado, Aurora, Caitlin Jorgensen, U Chicago, Kayla Warner, Lynchburg, Megan Johnson, Central College, Grace Richardson, NYU, and Jules Blaskowski, RPI. So we have the 5K national champion in the house back do, here. Am I blind or do I not see Fiona Smith on the line? She is in a white singlet. That was the, that was we the changed news. singlets. Wow. Okay. That was the new singlet she wanted to unfold for us, and there she is in a new white singlet. My heart's going to beat there that maybe Fiona wasn't on the starting line, but she's there in a brand new white singlet. Okay, crisis averted. Phew. But if you were here for, with us yesterday in the 5K, Fiona Smith took off. Evelyn Battleson Gunkel and Grace Richardson formed their own chase pack, a massive chase pack formed behind them. And Grace Richardson almost surprised the national champion, but Fiona Smith reacted quickly enough to take home the crown as they line up and await the start. 
underway in the women's 3,000 meter run. Stu, it'll be interesting to see how the results of the 5K maybe change the race dynamic in the 3K because Grace Richardson and Battleson Gunkel know that they, they can hang with Fiona Smith. They were close, but will Fiona Smith take the same tactic, try to put the distance into them early? Will they try to keep her closer? Anything can happen here. You know, if I'm a semi-fresh athlete in this race, or maybe just ran the DMR, what have you, I'm going to try to lead this race and push the pace. Fiona Smith had a pretty big effort in that 5K, and if they could string things out and make it honest, it could be tough. But it looks like Fiona Smith is working her way on the outside to the front of the race. Batetti currently leading with Faith Duncan and Natalie Batetti right behind her. Batetti, your early leader, she did a lot of solo running on the mile leg of the DMR yesterday. She looked really strong. She ran a 448 in the DMR yesterday. Couldn't quite hold on to the lead, but I mean, that was a huge effort for her, a great time. She's got the speed. Fiona Smith now up on the shoulder, and this is kind of the moment of truth. Is Fiona gonna sit for a while, like Ethan Gregg did in the men's 5K before taking the lead? She's got less distance to open up the lead, and you, you have to wonder if it shook her confidence at all, seeing Grace Richardson that late into the 5K. Yeah, you know, we, we tried to figure out if she knew where Grace Richardson was. We couldn't find Fiona after the race to ask her. So maybe she's changing up some tactics here as she's sitting. We usually see her leading, but maybe she wants to stay with the field now, not lap the entire field and lose track of where everyone is. This is the first time at a track national race in the last two indoor races where we've seen Fiona Smith kind of sit on the pack. She did that two, during outdoors with Cassie Parker. So we're back to Fiona Smith in the pack as they go through 600 meters. Yeah, I don't think Batetti is uncomfortable in this position, but she might be a little surprised to be in this position. Fiona Smith in a good spot, as is Faith Duncan. Haven't called her name very often. She's there off the shoulder, sitting in third, able to move up whenever she feels up to it. And Grace Richardson from last night in a new singlet, a white singlet, sitting kind of towards the back of the pack there. Maybe she's trying to bide her time a bit, feel things out as Batetti continues to lead with Faith Duncan of Wilmington in the hat. If you're interested in pace, the first 400 was covered in about 74 seconds, 75 seconds. So we're clicking off 38, 39 second laps so far. Batetti continues to lead the field. Fiona Smith has now kind of slotted down on the inside. That's a good position for her. And this has to give you hope if you're an athlete kind of seeing Fiona Smith not out front. It's still very early, but it isn't like, oh great, there goes Fiona, now the race for second begins. Everyone is in this right now. Everyone has an opportunity to take a claim at the national title as they come up to a third of the race, the 1K mark. This is really great for fans of distance running. We haven't seen a race like this really play out on the women's side in the last couple of years. We've seen hard charges from the front. We haven't really seen races where the whole field is in it for the majority of the race, and that's what we're being treated to right now as Batetti continues to click off laps. She leads them through the 1K mark in 3.13. A lot of people starting to move up, and that purple back of the singlet was Grace Richardson going to the outside. It looks like her she found Evelyn Battleson Gunkel as Fiona Smith goes to the lead, and the pace increases. The, the heavy hitters don't want to get too far away from this. I see Battleson Gunkel moving up, but Fiona Smith currently leading. You had to expect this, waiting until the 1K mark. Fiona Smith takes the lead, but Batetti is responding. A great response here from Batetti. It doesn't look like leading the race took too much out of her legs in the early stages. Faith Duncan continues to run really well in that neon hat in third. And from Emory, it's Bridget Hanley in fourth, but your mile champ is lurking. Grace Hadley there in fifth in the white and red. We've seen she has incredible closing speed, so if she's close, she could shut the door. She's also probably very tired, but Fiona Smith continuing to inject pace into this race. It's crazy how quickly this race strung out over a lap or two. And Faith Duncan is one of the fresher athletes she has yet to race in this national championship, so good to see her up there proving herself that she can hang with this field. 
But like you said, Grace Hadley lurking, kind of giving off the same sort of vibes as she did in the DMR. But Fiona Smith looks to be con taking control of this race and putting a slight distance for the very first time on Batetti as they come up to the 1600 mark. Fiona Smith dropped a 35.78 over that last 200. And so that is a very real acceleration. Batetti just now beginning to show some signs of strain as she yields maybe five meters to Fiona Smith, but the fresh Faith Duncan continues to lurk in the hat on Batetti's shoulder. This is the very first daylight we're seeing by Fiona Smith. She's increasing that lead with every stride. Now Faith Duncan goes around Batetti into second place. She wants to give chase. Grace Hadley into fourth. I think she's still close enough to close the door if she absolutely has to. Fiona Smith took them through the mile in 5.02. Fiona Smith continues the lead here. As I quickly pulled up some stats, I believe Faith Duncan was a transfer student from Mississippi State, so making her first national D3 debut here. But Faith, Fiona Smith is pouring it on. Faith Duncan in the hat and sunglasses refusing to yield too much distance but Fiona Smith is running 36 second laps asking big questions from the field it's a three woman race right now Batetti will not be dropped she's still there in third with 1,000 meters to go Fiona Smith chasing down history looking for another national title she had three coming into this weekend can she add a second and have her fifth all time? With 1K to go, Fiona Smith has a three second lead over Faith Duncan from Wilmington and Natalie Batetti from CMS. But here comes Evelyn Bowson. Gunkel was just on your screen, moving up through the field there into fourth for you, Chicago, passing Grace Hadley. You kind of see that top of your screen. And the gap is widening for Fiona Smith. She has 800 meters to go for another national title. Fiona Smith beginning to look untouchable as the battle for the All-America spots begin to take place behind her. You see the field strung out around the turn in that shot. Faith Duncan continuing to hang on to second, but Fiona Smith in a league of her own seven minutes into this women's 3K. When she comes back around, she'll have three laps to go. And this time she is making sure she's putting the rest of the field away. We don't want to speak too soon but it's looking good for Fiona Smith. Faith Duncan second, Natalie Batetti actually making a bid for second now, moving around Duncan. We see that battle play out. Batetti back into second behind that duo. Battleson Gunkel, U of Chicago. We saw she can put in the hard yards and she's towing Grace Hadley ever closer to that second and third spot. Fiona Smith rounding the turn. When she comes around, she'll see two to go. Two laps to go for Fiona Smith, and two laps remain in her D3 indoor career as she heads off to North Carolina State next year. Can Batetti close the gap on her at all? Bettelson Gunkel looking to move up into that third position, but right now it's Fiona Smith with about 350 meters to go. All eyes on Fiona Smith. I'm not sure they're gonna catch her today, though Batetti is charging hard. Duncan gets past, falls back into fourth. Battleson Gunkel looking really strong in that third position, gaining with every stride on Batetti. Fiona Smith looks over her shoulder, goes around a lapped athlete. She'll approach her last lap. She hears the bell. Fiona Smith heads for home in her final lap of her D3 indoor career. She makes everything look so effortless. She got surprised yesterday, not today, putting no question mark on this performance, capping off a great indoor season. She set the 5K national record. She's one of the best all time in the 3K, and she adds to her big weekend. First, she was the 5K national champion. Now, Fiona Smith is your national 3K champion. As we look behind Fiona Smith, your national champion, it's Batetti who did that early leading, battling home for second. Speaking of battling, it's Battleson Gunkel of UChicago in third and Hadley in fourth. Lexi what? Brown from Wartburg takes fifth. 
Megan Johnson of Central in sixth, Faith Duncan seventh, and Grace Richardson eighth to wrap up the top eight. But what a career. You see the national champions in Grace in there, Grace Hadley and Fiona Smith. 9.25 for Fiona Smith. And I saw her look around a little bit more this time. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of the field wanted to believe that Fiona Smith was within reach before this race maybe showing a little bit of weakness in the 5k if you want to call it that also their season's best in the 3k her seat time leading in was pretty close for the rest of the field but in the end she knew she had more in the legs she left no doubt about who the queen of division three distance running is right now fiona smith pulls off the double here at the 2024 national championships five national titles for fiona smith she won the cross country national title this year now as the 5k and 3k can she complete that's the guess that's a triple crown right there but can she complete the 10 and 5k double outdoors if she chooses to do those events we saw a lot of shuffling for positions a lot of hard racing in that one if you'll allow me to run you through the national or the excuse me the all-american position smith in one but teddy in two battleson gunkel takes third for university of chicago grace hadley your champ mile champion from wpi in fourth lexi brown in fifth megan johnson from central college in sixth faith duncan holds on to grab seventh from wilmington in this race and grace richardson who finished second in the 5k is eighth over 3,000 meters wow and there you see her with her family. We learned earlier that oftentimes she didn't have her full family here together, both mom and dad here in the championships. We learned about that home cooked meal she had, probably had it again last night before this 3K. Five national titles for Fiona Smith, capping off an incredible indoor career. We'll see her outdoors and can she add two more to her legacy? Yeah, it's been absolutely a pleasure to watch her race indoors. We're looking forward to those outdoor races. All smiles from Vitetti there. You can just see on the side and great racing there from these Division Three distance women. They can take a breather. They're done. We'll see them again in May. One quick fact about Fiona Smith. In every single national meet that she's been in, she has yet to finish worse than fifth place. On that note, we'll step away for just a few minutes. When we come back to the Virginia Beach Sports Center, we'll have the men's 3,000 meter run for you. And we're back live from the Virginia Beach Sports Center here in Virginia Beach, Virginia, indoor track and field national championships here in Division Three. Before we jump into the action, we've been bringing you some updates about the men's 800. We saw a big EQ from Kale Showman. Looks like he's back in now. The Showman takes the crown, gets reinstated. These live results didn't show if there was a protest or not, so it looks like it was final. So maybe fed you some misinformation, didn't mean to do that. But now we know Kale Showman of the Cross is your national champion, which basically seals the deal for lacrosse right now. If I, I don't want to go too off limb because I know Whitewater has two athletes and they don't have a 4x4, but lacrosse is looking pretty. Eau Claire does have a 4x4. So unless crazy things happen in this 3K, lacrosse is in the driver's seat right now. Yeah, they're looking at 55 total points right now, four points ahead of Wisconsin Oshkosh. Wisconsin Eau Claire with 49 points, currently sitting in third, and Whitewater in fourth with 24. And on the women's side right now, Loris is in the lead with 48, followed by Wash U with 41. Both have a four by four so it feels it's gonna be close it's the stuff of dreams it's the stuff of nightmares we're coming down to the four by four and on the women's side lacrosse will look to lock things up here they've got a huge contingent in the men's 3000 we're a couple minutes away from that race still when the athletes take to the track we'll introduce them to you but definitely some points for the taking here yeah i think right now 
while things look very good for lacrosse, they want to make a statement as they came in with 31 athletes and they want to leave with as many points as possible. If you probably asked them, this maybe wasn't their picture perfect weekend they were expecting. They've had some ups and downs, but I think they really rallied around each other, rallied through adversity, you know, with, with Schrader being hurt, Ethan Gregg not taking home that national title. He's running her off. They can't knock him for that, but I'm sure they rallied around each other and are looking to get the job done here in the 3K and then in the 4x4. Absolutely, and Stu, I can go ahead and guarantee you an electric atmosphere here. If you look on the screen right now, you see not only the Lynchburg fans lined up for their two athletes in this final, but next to them, the lacrosse fans who have, is it five? Five lacrosse athletes in this final, something like that. And so we have two dueling fan bases, four athletes for lacrosse, dueling fan bases that are really gonna bring the house down here at the Virginia Beach, Virginia Beach Sports Center. Second time there, second, Virginia Speech. Second time I've messed that up. Final stride outs in the men's 3,000. And because you made fun of me, Stu, I'm going to make you read every name <laughs> in this field. All right. I, I'll happily do that. Gunnar Schlender, Wisconsin, Whitewater. Colin McLaughlin, Carnegie Mellon. Nate Lentz, Williams. Jack Kinzer, Wartburg. Adam Lenzer, Wisconsin Lacrosse. Christopher Collette, Wartburg. Spencer Moon Simpson, Colin Kirkpatrick, Pomona Pitzer, Isaac Van Westrenen, Cornell College, Ethan Gregg, Wisconsin Lacrosse, Corey Kennedy, RPI, Frank Sorba of Lynchburg, Sam Aquaviva, MIT, Michael Maddock of Wisconsin Lacrosse, Christian Pasco, your 5K champ of Whitewater, Jason Hunt of Lynchburg, he anchored that DMR, Jason Gibbons of RPI, Aiden Mathai of Lacrosse, Enrique Salazar of Manchester and Grant Mathai of lacrosse. And we talked about Wisconsin lacrosse. There's four athletes, but RPI, they got two in here. They did really well yesterday in that 5K with Corey Kennedy and Vince Simonetti. So we'll see if Jason Gibbons can kind of that channel that Simonetti magic that happened last night where he got fourth place. And he is, fr I'll get take you through some fresh athletes as well. Colin McLaughlin of Carnegie Mellon, Nate Lentz of Williams, Jack Kinzer of Wartburg, Jason Gibbons of RPI. So not too many fresh legs in here. But they and Colin do. Kirkpatrick. Colin Kirkpatrick, which is a big set of fresh legs. Yes. So we'll see what happens here. This is the race where Ethan Gregg took over and never looked back last year. Can he get redemption for yesterday's 5K for that DQ? back at outdoors. I know he's channeled that into some positive energy as he won the cross country national championship. But it's a loaded field and we're excited to call this one. We weren't sure what we'd see this weekend from the defending 3K national champion Ethan Gregg. We know he had some illness. We know he had some injuries over the winter. But I think he put a lot of those doubts to rest in the 5K. He didn't quite do the patented lead out but he was strong in the pack, took the lead midway, and still finished really strong. Yeah, something I want to see out of Christian Patska is, let's see how he responds. I know last year he did the steeple 5K double outdoors, which is tough. He gave it all of his effort last year in this 3K movement. So that's what I'm be looking for, is how can Christian Patska respond to the double? And we'll wait for the gun. Underway here in the men's 3,000 meter run. This field is chock full of national champions from every distance in Division Three. We come to this point in a historic depth in Division Three distance, and we'll settle who the 3K national champion is right here, right now. I talked about if you're fresh, maybe trying to push the pace here and put some sting into the legs, and right on cue, we see Colin Kirkpatrick of Pomona Pitzer going out to the lead. Nate Lentz looks to join in right behind him in second. So we'll see here how this plays out. The two fresh legs go to the front, followed by Enrique Salazar, Christopher Collette, but here comes Ethan Gregg around the pack. Kirkpatrick making a huge opening statement. I think we, we're talking about fresh legs. I think that's a really important thing to consider when you think about a 5,000 yesterday that went fast. You had to run, what was it, 14.06 to be an All-American, 14.05 to be an All-American yesterday. And that's not an easy effort even for guys this talented. 
So an interesting dynamic playing out here as Colin Kirkpatrick takes him through 400 meters, sub 64, a 63 second opener. Ethan Gregg leading the chase back. <laughs> Ethan Gregg feeling a little uncomfortable because he's supposed to be up there. Yeah, he's saying, Colin, that's my job. So, but maybe that gives him something to chase right now and not have to worry about being the guy taking it out. He can kind of key off of Colin Kirkpatrick at one point in his career. Colin Kirkpatrick did hold the 3K steeple national record until Christopher Collette broke it. So he does have some speed in the legs. He is originally from New Zealand. Just watched Gordy Beamish take home the 1500 meter in the World Indoor Championships. I asked him, are you gonna channel your country mates energy? And he goes, I'm gonna do the best I can. Ethan Gregg has towed this field back up to the back of Kirkpatrick. And we are even Steven here through 600 they'll come up to 800 meters in the men's 3000 meter run and corey kennedy is running with such confidence right now he's sitting in third he was third in the 5k yesterday as ethan Gregg takes over nate lentz into fourth and spencer moon putting his head in there as in fifth and the anchor from mit's dmr last night sam aquaviva sitting in sixth ethan Gregg says thanks but i got this he goes to the lead, towing the field through 1,000. Kirkpatrick starting to fall back through the field a little bit into fifth place. Spencer Moon loves to play this game as well. He slots into third. We saw him run like this in the 5K. He was finally rewarded with a great All-American position. Ethan Gregg takes him through 1,000, sub 215. 214 through 1,000. No, That's, sorry, that can't be right. It's 243. 243, sorry, live results looking a little weird. 243 through 1,000. Ethan Gregg continuing to lead this field over Corey Kennedy from RPI. Ethan Gregg continues to lead here. A great look at the pack, strung out. You can kind of tell it's been quick. Can Ethan Gregg find the magic he found last year in the 3K? that set him off onto an incredible outdoor season where he went head to head with Alex Phillip in that outdoor 10K. But Corey Kennedy and Spencer Moon, love to see them coming back from big efforts in that 5K, leading that big chase pack. Nate Lentz sticking his neck, neck in there as well. We talked to him before the race and he was the last man in the mile last year. Kind of ran with house money, came away as a All-American and now he's going all in on this 3K and it looks to be working out for him through 1400 meters. Such an interesting race playing out. Before a mile we've seen two separate leaders open up really big leads but I'm starting to sense a little bit of panic in the chase pack now as Ethan Gregg continues to press this advantage and the field is trying to work out who exactly has the courage to chase him. Nate Lentz from Williams looking really strong, but Spencer Moon actually doing a lot of work here, kind of yo-yoing. We'll see if he can get back into second and tow them up to Greg. 420.97 through the mile, so basically a 421 through the mile for Ethan Greg. Spencer Moon came through in two, excuse me, 425. So a brisk pace here early on. Patska is currently sitting kind of in the back third of that chase pack. It's a little too early to throw out alarm bells, but if I'm a Patska fan, I'd like to see him start to move up right now. Yeah, as you say that, Gunnar Schlender, his teammate, is starting to go around the pack there. Maybe he'll take a cue off of him as they go to 1,800 meters, 12, 1,200 to go, six laps remain. Ethan Gregg keeps taking quick glimpses over his shoulder. I'm not sure he needs to do that right now. He's got a 25, 30, 40 meter lead on this pack, rounding the turn, no hitch in his stride. He, it always looks like he's pouring his all heart and soul into every stride in this race. The 3,000 meter title is his, and he's trying to remind the field of that. With 1,000 meters to go, Ethan Craig looks to repeat history with the same tactic he did yesterday, but Sam Aquaviva in the chase pack makes a big move to try to get this crew back up to him. The entire field is still relatively in this for an All-American position. Can they work together over the last 800 meters to chase down Ethan Gregg? Ethan Gregg, it looks huge, but he's really only got a six second lead. The chase back and Ethan Gregg are running essentially equivalent paces right now. We've seen it before this weekend. Six seconds can disappear really quickly 
if there's the right incentive in the chase pack, and you're starting to see it now. They're pushing each other. Gunnar Schlender tried to go around, which got Sam Aquaviva and Nate Lentz to change their pace. They're starting to work together now. They realize they can maybe reel in Ethan Gregg, and Gunnar Schlender goes to the front to try and bring this crew back to them. Can they make up the ground? Three laps remain, 600 meters. Gunnar Schlender taking a book, taking a page out of Christian Pasca, his teammate's book, and going for glory. Schlender looks to gun down Greg. Greg beginning to see a little pressure, feel a little bit of heat from Gunnar Schlender, who looks up and he's starting to believe it's possible for the Roar Hawks. He flies around the turn. He's got five seconds to make up on Greg. He's pulling away from the chase back, and the yards are coming back to him with every stride. Ethan Gregg taking a look back every couple of steps to see where Schlender is, and Schlender is gaining momentum. 400 meters to go. Can Gunnar Schlender chase down Ethan Gregg? Pasca sees what his teammate's doing. The pack behind him is starting to go. Ethan Gregg looks a little tired, takes a look over his shoulder, and sees Schlender right there. Ethan Gregg believes it's possible, but Gunnar Schlender may have something to say about that. Schlender ran, put in two seconds into Greg over the last 200. This is still a race, ladies and gentlemen. And this is still a race as Ethan Gregg comes up to hear the bell. And the backpack is starting to go. Ethan Gregg takes one more look behind him. Can he outrun Gunnar Schlender? But here comes the entire chase pack up to Gunnar Schlender. Ethan Gregg takes one more look. He's got 100 meters to go. Does he have enough in the legs? This chase pack is going to catch Gunnar Schlender. But Ethan Gregg looks one more time over his shoulder, gives a sigh of relief, points to the crowd, hands in the air. He knows he won. Ethan Gregg, your 3K champion. And pass on Schlender. Blanket finish there for second in the men's 3,000. Patska coming out of nowhere for a strong finish. Patska does get awarded with the second place for Whitewater in 8-10. Colin McLaughlin from Carnegie Mellon in third. Schlender, one position, two positions behind his teammate for fourth. Jason Hunt in fifth. But Ethan Gregg is your hero today. We had our doubts. We weren't sure what kind of fitness he was in. He was in coming into today, but he left no doubt, taking the early lead away from Colin Kirkpatrick, pushing the rest of the way. I think the crowd has got to take their hat off to Gunnar Slender as well for making that such an exciting race. Blanket finish behind for second. Huge race for Whitewater, but Ethan Gregg wins huge points for lacrosse essentially guaranteeing their national title. What a race. Wow. Hats off to Gunnar Schlender for doing that, but Ethan Gregg proving why he was last year's national champion and proving why he's the cross country national champion. He dealt with some illness, as Noah said, doing it for his team. You know it must feel good for him to get this title back after being potentially disappointed last night in the 5K. And look at the camaraderie here in Division Three. That's the Lynchburg guys, he's high-fiving. Patska moved up six spots with a 28 second last 200 to finish runner up in this race. We were talking about it, you were like, here he comes starting to move up. He must have saw Schlender and got a second wind in the legs to get that type of effort. Absolutely, I think Schlender kind of made the race for the chase back, allowed them to believe that catching Greg was possible, but ultimately it was not. Ethan Greg defends his title in the men's 3,000 meter run, adding to his strong second place finish in the 5K. I mean, the top two just swap positions from the 5K to the 3K. Yeah, that we saw that last year and they did it this year now too. Incredible. They're the faces of D3 distance running right now. And there you see Wisconsin lacrosse realizing it's going to be out of reach they win a national title once again as a team. Grant Mathai snuck in there for eighth place in All-American. And Jason Hunt in All-American as well. He was the anchor in that DMR, but Ethan Gregg getting the job done. They lost by a point last year. No, they, excuse me, they won indoors, lost by a point outdoors, but they repeat as indoor champions. 
Amazing run there from Ethan Gregg. An amazing finale to the distant side of things. All that's left on the track are the four by 400 meter relays. The women will be up first. We'll step away from the track for just a minute and then we'll come back live to bring you the finale of the 2024 Indoor National Championships. Welcome back to the 2024 Division Three Indoor Track and Field National Championships here in Virginia Beach at the Virginia Beach Sports Center. We just wrapped things up for the distance events with electric 3,000 meter races from the men and women where we saw Oshkosh, sorry, excuse me, Wisconsin Lacrosse solidify their hold on the men's national title with 66 points but it's a different story on the women's side with one event left to score Loris and Wash U separated by seven points each with a four by four entered and anything could happen yeah it looks like Hopkins and MIT do not have four by fours as well so we'll be waiting to see where they fall because Rochester with 22 points has a 4x4, Warburg with 23 points, has a 4x4. Loris and Washu separated by seven, as Noah just said. So the team battle is shaking up on the women's side. Loris 48, Washu 41, Hopkins 33, MIT 30, but then Warburg and Rochester both with 4x4s back in the 23 and 22 range. All of a sudden, we find ourselves here at the final event of these national championships, the 4 by 400 meter relays. We'll see the women up first. Just incredible stuff. And from Stu and I up in the booth, it just absolutely, the action has flown by today. I can't believe we're on the last event. I said that last time, but I've had so much fun. Noah, with you up here in the booth, those listening at home, hope you've enjoyed our commentary. We try to bring some liveliness to it. For good or for worse, or whatever the phrase is. We're probably on mute by now in most of your homes. For, for those of you who are still listening, wow, we really appreciate it. On the track now, you start to see them adjust their blocks on your screen. The women's 4x400 four meter relay. As with all the sprinting events today, this one's going to be run in two sections. Section one on the track now making their final preparations. We'll get them underway here in just a couple minutes. Electric crowd here at the Virginia Beach Sports Center. They've been here all day, fans lining the track. Just been a really great time, really solidifying the fact that Division Three is an amazingly competitive division right now. On your screen now, section one of the women's 4x4. Four, four On the inside in lane, in lane three, Wartburg. Outside of them in lane four is going to be Bethel. In lane five, we'll see Williams. In lane six, a very strong squad from Rochester on the track. Rochester, the defending national champions in the same situation. If I recall, remember, if I recall correctly, they, had, they ran in section one last year and had to wait and see if they won the national record. We've seen winners from section one already tonight. So while it is you know an advantage to go in section two, like we mentioned earlier, this is all just about going as fast as you possibly can, and so I'm not sure these athletes are overly concerned with it. And who else to lead off your team than the pole vault national champion and a member of the 4x4 last year and fourth place in the Open 4, Madeline O'Connell? Seen a lot of her this weekend. It's been a huge success. Stu, talk about baton security. This is such a huge deal, especially with team implications on the line. The 400, especially indoors, is one of the sketchier relays, and that baton zone is going to get crazy. Yeah, right now, especially for Loris, you just have to say get the baton around because they have a seven-point cushion, which is favorable in this type of DMR situation. Excuse me, 4x4 four four situation, but the only risk you run is dropping the baton or some sort of DQ of some sort. So keep the baton, clean handoffs, don't go too early. And is, that, 
that fine line as a coach of wanting to hype up your squad but not overhype it because they really just have a job to do, and that's win the team title. And having some conversations with Matt Jones, I doubt he's even laying out any sort of situation. He just lets them go compete from Loris, that is. Women hearing their final instructions. They'll climb in to the blocks to write the final chapter of these 2024 national championships. Underway in the men, women's, excuse me, 4x400 four meter relay. This is section one leading off leg one. Rochester's Madeline O'Connell goes up in lane six, but she'll be chased down by the rest of the field right now. Bella King Harvey of Williams, but here comes Kelsey Seelock of Bethel and Sophia Stahl of Warburg. But O'Connell takes to the lead and Rochester off to an early lead. Rochester looking really great right now ahead of the strong squad from Williams in second. It's Bethel in third and Wartburg in fourth. O'Connell has got to be tired and Williams is looking to take advantage of that. Lake two is out on the track awaiting the baton. Now it's looking to be Rochester handing it off with a small lead as Wartburg moves to her shoulder. Rochester gets the baton first with Williams right there. That's going to be Cameron Taylor, it looks like, for Williams. But Ashley Heffernan of Rochester taking things out hard. Rochester trying to expand the league. Williams there in second. And a distant third right now is Bethel and Wartburg. This is big for Rochester. Right now they, they are in the outskirts of a national trophy. And if they can get a dub here, that could put them into the fourth place slot. Hefferman from Rochester holding on to that lead. She takes the turn for the last time and will hand off to leg three in this relay. Williams starting to give a little bit of ground as Taylor holds on to second. Nora Chen about to get the baton from Rochester as Cameron Taylor of Williams closes hard. But Rochester continues to lead Nora Chen with the baton. And Claire Jensen of Williams gives chase with Bethel and Warburg behind them. Chen from Rochester looking to hold on to the lead in section one of the women's four by 400. But Jensen from Williams also looking really strong, trying to eat up some of the lead as they head into their second lap. The anchors get ready on the side. I wonder how much Rochester knows that they need this four by four for a potential trophy. They're the defending national champions. They're the current D3 record holders. They had the number one time this season. They are running for each other right now. And she has 100 meters to go before she hands off to Megan Bell. It's all about the clock. Jensen cannot eat into that lead. Chen is going to hand it off to Bell, who will take the anchor leg for the women's Rochester 4x4. Four four. And a good handoff. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, no. Maybe outside the zone. Not sure. I don't see any flags yet. We'll keep an eye on that. But for now, Rochester, Megan Bell continuing to lead this race after a somewhat sloppy handoff. We'll wait to get an official ruling on that. That could be huge. Donaldson from Williams anchoring that squad. Regardless, Bell is running hard. You know, you put that pass behind you. Don't worry about that box baton handoff. You keep moving, giving your team the best chance possible. As you said, Noah, now they're going up against the clock. Place doesn't matter right now. It's how fast you can go. And they look to have the first, the fastest time heading into heat two. Bell takes the bell, turns around the final corner. Eyes on the finish line, looking to run as quick as possible. We'll settle that handoff later. It is Rochester taking the win in section one ahead of Williams. The women's 4 by 400 meter relay. Bethel grabs that third spot and Wartburg in fourth. Rochester putting up a 345-2-1 as the current bubble time. Wow, that matches their number one seed time. No other team has come close to that. And now they have to feel really good about where things stand. Messy handoff there from the leg three to the anchor leg. We'll take another look at that on your screen now. 
Here it goes, Chin handing off to Bell. Oh, she missed they right just, away. They just couldn't quite get it. Stu, can you tell if that's a, legally in the zone or not? I I couldn't really tell. I don't. It's hard to tell in the in that picture. I couldn't yeah. tell. We didn't see any flags go up, and so we'll just assume that that's a fair handoff until we hear otherwise. I mean, it's pretty amazing. 3:45, even with that stumble there, but super strong mark there from Rochester. Section two now steps onto the track to adjust their blocks and determine their fate in section two. Loris, your current overall team leaders. They could have had a chance at their own national record with, with that, without, with a good handoff, their national record is 344.84. I'm sure you just, I'm sure you take the win, but you'll, you'll think about, that'll keep them up at night probably. But that's the fourth fastest all-time mark from Rochester. Loris on the inside lane, your current overall team leaders with 48 points. To their outside, Wash U currently sitting in second with 41 points. Colby is in lane five, and then Rowan, the strong squad, rounds out the field in lane six. Two-time national champion from this meet alone, Grace Alley gets things started for Loris. A seven-point cushion right now. So what would need to happen here? They need to finish. As long as they're close to Wash U, things look good for Loris to hang on to this national title. Here we go, the final event, the final section, the final heat on the track of these women's championships. What a championships they've been, and I'm sure this heat will be no different. And our final event of these 24 championships is underway now as we head around the top turn. Rowan off to a really strong start. Inside, Wash U looking up to make up the stagger on Loris immediately. And Wash U has to feel good about this. Emma Kelly on the anchor leg. But Rowan looks to get to the bell first. Wash U slots in right behind them. That's Molly Lodge of Rowan leading things off for them with, with a strong start. But here comes Wash U on her outside. That's Kylie Spitek. Grace Alley with a little bit of work to do. Found herself in fourth place. Keeps trying to get on the shoulder of third, but she's beginning to be distanced by the top two teams. This is big for Wash U. They need to put as much distance as they can between them and Loris. It's Stewart from Wash U getting the handoff, but Rowan's Pope is right behind her and now taking the lead. This could be good for Wash U. To get, yeah, to get strung out like that, but Alyssa Fadenauer of Loris has the baton. The experience that she brings to this Loris relay is huge. She's been a part of every single one of those four by fours that won a national championship. If I'm the Cole Stewart, just stay patient here and try to work your way back through as the back of the pack comes up closer to her shoulder as he tries to get around Pope after this turn. Stewart and Wash U continue to press Rowan, moving up onto the shoulder now just as Fadenhauer moves the lower squad into third. Stewart continue to push, and now she takes the top opportunity to go around Pope and continue down this home stretch, trying to get as much space as possible between them and Loris, and Danielle Schultz will take the baton for Wash U. Schultz around the top turn for Wash U. Rowan in chase. Loris has now solidified their hold onto third within sight of second, and Colby rounds out the foursome right now. And the entire field is back together now. Rowan, Loris, and Colby all with Wash U now as Rowan tries to get around them on the home stretch. It's going to be Rowan in the last lap of the third leg here, followed by Wash U, Colby, and Loris. Loris just cannot make a move stick right now, but they're still in contention. We're seeing a super strong leg from Pedersen of Rowan. Wash U with some fight. She's going back around all before the turn. She gets the inside. Loris moves back to fourth in this heat. How far of a distance can Emma Kelly give 
Laura, give Wash U over Loris, and the national 800 meter champion has the baton, and Loris needs to do some work. The anchor legs are on the track. The anchor legs are moving. Emma Kelly has the baton in her hand. How much does your national record holder in the 800 have left? As long as she can continue this lead, Rowan and Colby stay with it. That's exactly what Wash U needs. They need Emma Kelly to close this last 200 meter very hard, and they need Rowan and Colby to do their work as well. Harmony Creasy from Loris has a lot of work to do to keep that squad in condition for the national title. But up front, Emma Kelly presses the advantage. She takes the turn for the very last time. Nobody on her shoulder. She's all alone once again as she enters the home stretch. Wash U looking to take the win in section two. It's not going to be enough for the overall title. And now let's see how far Loris is back from Wash U. Loris finishes sixth, Wash U second. Quick math, six points to so three points. Not enough. Loris wins the team title. And Rochester wins the event. Rochester 4x400 four meter relay is are your national champions there on your screen now. A little bit of difficulty in the handoff but they pull off the national title. Loris realizing that they've done just enough to hold on to that team trophy. The Loris fans going crazy. Wow, that actually got pretty dramatic. Rochester with the win back-to-back -back national team, excuse me, back-to-back -back national 4x4 titles. Loris reclaimed the top spot. Drama unfolding. There was a chance there where Wash U could have done enough. I mean, they did everything they could it's, to get there. Exactly. So hard to tell when you split a final into two sections like that. But Loris, by the skin of their teeth, doing just enough. Let me run you through the final field of eight so you know how it went down. Rochester takes the win, defends the title. Wash U takes second, Williams in third, Colby in fourth, Rowan in fifth, Loris in sixth, does just enough provisionally to hold on to the national title by two points. Bethel takes seventh, and Wartburg claims eighth. Wow. We promised there would be crazy competition and it's living up to the hype Loris gets a team title and they do it a lot differently this year helped in the field and then that 4x4 as you get a shot there of Williams there that 4x4 behind them is Loris embracing in the hug there they are there's Loris Rochester's going to take home a trophy, too. It looks like they're going to be finishing in fourth in the overall team competition. We mentioned that, that if they won, they could have moved into a trophy spot, and they did just that. Noah, you're right. Such a cool event because not only do you win that, that title for the relay squad, but also, you know, the team competition isn't over until it's over for the most part. And so to wrap that up, you see that emotion. I, I think a sixth place has never meant more to Grace Alley and Fadenauer. Yeah, Grace Alley, Alyssa Fadenauer, big reasons why Loris Track and Field is a powerhouse now in Division Three. Grace, Grace Alley with five events on the weekend, a first place in the pen, a first place in the high jump. Goes 1-2 with her teammate on that 4x4, four four, was in the triple jump just did so much for her team and we talked earlier with her that everything that she did was for the team this weekend high drama in the women's 4x400 meter relay the men are up next to put an exclama exclamation mark on this weekend of track and field we'll step away for just a minute and we'll come back with the conclusion of the 2024 indoor national championships for division three from the virginia beach sports center
are you ready for the finale from these 2024 Division Three Indoor Track and Field National Championships hosted at the Virginia Beach Sports Center in Virginia Beach, Virginia. I'm Noah, this is Stu. We've had such a great weekend calling these races and boy, we've got one more for you. We just saw the women's title get settled in the women's 4x400 meter relay. It's the men's turn. This is our final event on the track, the final event of championship Saturday, the men's 4x400 meter relay. The team title, I guess the team trophies aren't fully set yet. Eau Claire can move into second place. They're down by two points to Wisconsin, Oshkosh, but lacrosse has this locked up. Oshkosh in second with 51, Eau Claire 49, and Whitewater 37. So a WIAC top four. We kind of joked about it in on Twitter, our D3 Glory Days Twitter account, that you could finish fourth in your conference meet and still win a team trophy. It's a good day to be a school in Wisconsin. But now we turn our attention to the track and back for the 4x4. Four four. We have SUNY Geneseo in lane three. Lane four is Wisconsin lacrosse. The D3 4x4 four four powerhouse, Mount Union in five, and Dubuque in six. I guarantee you most of these athletes could kind of care less about the team situation being settled at this point. They want to get out there, and they want to claim the 4x400 four meter relay championship for their school. This is one that comes with a lot of bragging rights. Yeah, you want to be known as a school with the best 4x4 four four squad. Mount Union takes a lot of pride in their 4x4. Four four. I'm sure SUNY Geneseo wants to repeat as champions. And lacrosse has a lot of... They need to not get DQ this year, is what I was trying to say. I was trying to pick up the right word. But they have some redemption as they were DQ in the final last year, missing out on being a top eight team. And so they want to cap off this national team title with at least placing in the top eight here in the 4x4. Section one of two, you know how we do things. By now, this final is run over two sections, the fastest time wins. The gentlemen on the track now have a chance to set the bar as high as they possibly can and they climb into their blocks wanting to run fast but most importantly of all secure that baton get it around the track. The women did that successfully. Let's see if we can get it around the track in the men's race. Final event underway, and Stu, we are away clean after some jitters on day one. Day two has been incredibly smooth. No one has been stood up in their blocks as Sunu Geneseo takes the early lead on the stagger. Jared Storm of Mount Union, though, in lane five looks good. We'll see. It should be Union and Geneseo as Mount Union goes to the lead now with Geneseo behind them. Storm from Mount Union leads around the top torn. Geneseo behind him. Dubuque in third. And the cross rounds out the field in fourth as they hit the turn for the last time. The last lap for these gentlemen of these national championships. Mount Union looks to hand off to lane, excuse me, leg two with the lead. Mount Union continue to be a class in the 4x4 four four as a great handoff. And the order stays the same. It's Mount Union, Sinu Geneseo, Dubuque, and Lacrosse. Mount Union may be just stretching that lead a little bit, but we know how much things can change over two laps of this track here in Virginia Beach. Mount Union kind of extending this lead here on a great first lap. Lacrosse is trying to get around the outside. They got around Dubuque. Can they get around Geneseo here on the second leg? Lacrosse will make, look to make that pass on the straightaway. That's the most efficient place to do it. They do slot into second, but this is the Mount Union show coming across his final turn. We've got Hayden Gibson on the track for Mount Union. Lake three is underway. Another clean handoff for Mount Union. Very efficient as Lacrosse continues to be in second, followed by Geneseo and Dubuque. Lacrosse giving chase to a hard charging Mount Union. They haven't been touched yet. You know how much this title would mean to the Mount Union squad. He comes around, he'll see one lap to go as the anchors start getting antsy on the sidelines. Can Lacrosse get any ground on Mount Union? Coming up to 100 meters to go, Lacrosse is pushing. 
Just saw Luke Schrader hobble to cheer for his teammate on the backstretch. Pierce from the cross is making up ground on his leg. They may be handing off here shoulder to shoulder. It's Wisconsin lacrosse. It's Mount Union handing off the baton at the same time. Matt McBride from Mount Union slots into second behind Chase Dornink from lacrosse. If I, want, if I want the baton in the hand of anybody, it might be Matt McBride. So much experience in this event. He moves up onto the shoulder of lacrosse. They'll hear the bell. One lap to go and he won the men's 4 by 400 meter relay. Matt McBride looks to solidify the lead. He moves into the inside of lane one. Great turn by Matt McBride. He didn't cut in to impede lacrosse, keeping both of them upright and staying on the outside until just now when he has enough room to move on the inside. He anchored that outdoor 4x4 to the win, and now he's anchoring Mount Union to a lead. Really a great leg from McBride there. If lacrosse was going to go around, they were going to have to swing wide because Mount Union shut the door. 3-11-5-2. 3-11-5-2. Is the bubble for the national championship here in the men's 4x400 meter relay? 4703 for Matt McBride in that anchor leg. Yeah, look, it looks to be by far the fastest leg in that section. Matt McBride does his job. Mount Union will head to the side of the track and await their fate. They'd love to bring this trophy home for their squad. Matt McBride with the hair, <laughs> hugs it out with Wisconsin lacrosse. Job done for section one. Their championships is over. All they have left to do is wait on the results of section two on the track now, adjusting their blocks. This will be the last race of the 2024 national champions. This is section two of the men's 4x400 on the track now on the inside lane is going to be a squad from Loris to their outside Wisconsin Eau Claire John Carroll gets going in five and Bethel gets going in six Eau Claire as long as they can finish seventh place they'll have a share at the second place runner-up trophy they get the runner-up trophy if they finish sixth or better well, I guess the outright runner-up trophy, sixth or better, a share of it at seven. Still something left to play for here in Virginia Beach. What a weekend we've had. It all comes down to this. We'll hear the gun for the very last time this weekend. What a show. What a show these athletes have put on for us. Let's climb into the blocks for the last time. Let's put a bow on it. Section two, men's four by 400 meter relay. Underway in the final event in the final section, the men's 4x400 four meter relay. Eau Claire knows what they need to do to get the outright runner up trophy. Right now, it's going to need. Mountain Union has the number four time in D3 history, the fourth best performance in D3 history. That's what it's going to take to get the national title. Grant Nelson knows what he's doing out there. He slots into second for the Bethel squad. Right behind John Carroll, it's Tyler Gast. John Carroll coming in with the number one seed, their second all time, but Bethel has something to say about it as they look to hand off in front of them on this exchange. Great handoffs for both squads, but Bethel a little bit more efficient there as they take the first turn in the lead. Loris in third, Eau Claire, had some work to do back and forth, but Bethel looking very strong. John Carroll beginning to inch up to the shoulder. This is leg two. That's Garrett Clark of John Carroll taking over and taking over the lead. 
John Carroll looking to take down their OAC rival, Mount Union, but can they do it? They had the squad to do it, and now it's a matter of executing the race strategy. Thompson from Bethel now finds himself in second with a little bit of work to do. John Carroll beginning to pull away slightly. Clark will look to hand off to Caleb Correa, the 800 meter specialist. Let's see what he can do over 400. It's a clean handoff. John Carroll in the lead. It's Sampson from Bethel who is gonna look to flip the script on Correa from John Carroll. Correa was third in the 800 a few hours ago and now is about to feel Bethel on his shoulder. One lap remains on this leg and Bethel is feeling confident and they overtake John Carroll at the bell on this third leg. Josh Sampson is bringing the heat to the track in Virginia Beach. He puts his squad back in the lead, but Correa is not giving up on this quite yet. John Carroll cannot be killed still. One stride behind, he'll look to move up to the shoulder. Anchor legs on the track. Here comes the baton for the final time. Bethel gonna hand off in the lead. Barely. <laughs> oh, oh, a little chaos there from Eau Claire. We'll see what happens. It wouldn't be a D3 national championship without some drama in the four x four as Eau Claire trying to make up ground to get an outright runner-up trophy but right now it's Bethel in the 4x4 leading at the bell it's Jacob Parent can he take home the gold for his gold medal coach but but Bashir Al-Marahi of John Carroll has something to say about it Bethel is desperately defending that lead but Al-Marahi from John Carroll is not going to let him go quietly into the night he pulls up on the shoulder around the turn John Carroll fighting for the lead it's John Carroll it's Bethel John Carroll with the edge at the line takes it and Mount Union is going to win the indoor 4x4 311 52 stands it's Mount Union the national champions Mount Union out of the heat one Matt McBride with the huge anchor leg solidifies them as your national champion in the men's 4x400 meter relay. Let's run you through the top eight. Mount Union in 311.52 takes the win. Wisconsin Lacrosse puts an exclamation mark on their weekend and the team national title by finishing second in 312.39. John Carroll, who looked great in that second heat, will finish third. Bethel will finish fourth. SUNY Geneseo in fifth. Eau Claire in sixth, and Stu will tell you what that means in a moment. Loris finishes in seventh, and Dubuque takes eighth. We'll wait for team scores to get updated, but for now you see the tongues out on the track as Jared Storm flexes one last time on the infield. Matt McBride pulls the hair out of his eyes. Those are your national champions here in Virginia Beach. All right, Eau Claire finishing sixth, gets their three points and take the outright runner-up trophy over Wisconsin Oshkosh. However, there was a little bit of jostling on that one of those exchanges. We'll see what happens here, if anything is protested or whatnot. But right now, unofficially, Eau Claire, your outright runner-up on the team title of the overall competition. Incredible action here this weekend as the fans begin to file out. The athletes begin to collect their belongings. Man, we've had such a great time up here. Just nonstop action on the track, in the field. A lot of memories, Stu, that not just we'll take with us, but uh, especially these athletes will take with them. I don't think anybody who was here this weekend is gonna forget it anytime soon. We talked about it at length on Friday, how personal bests get you into this final and it would take even more than your personal best to come away with a national title. And we're seeing just that all time performances left and right, national records, championship records. We've seen it all here at the championships and Mount Union once again, four by four champions. They did it outdoors and they come back and do it indoors. Thank you guys for joining us over the course of this broadcast in the last couple days. 
Stu and I are really grateful to be on the microphones here. If you want to learn more about us and what we do, you can check out Division Three Glory Days, D3 Glory Days on Instagram, Twitter, or our website, d3glorydays.com. Thanks to the NCAA for having us and hosting this indoor championships here in Virginia Beach. We'll check back in in a moment just to solidify the team scores for you. But before we do that, just a huge thank you to everyone who participated in bringing you these national championships, the officials, the volunteers, NCAA employees, especially our cameramen out there and our production crew standing up here behind us. We really appreciate the work that you guys put in to bring these championships to life. From me, Noah, and my co-host, Stu, we'll step away for now, come back to solidify the team champions for you. But thanks for joining us. 2024 Division Three Indoor Track and Field National Championships here in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Welcome back for the last time to live coverage of the Indoor Track and Field National Championships here in Division Three. Really our last order of business from the booth up here is to show you final team scores that are official, at least as we know them. We're not aware of any protests underway, but if that changes, we'll, uh, we'll certainly let you know. On the men's side, you see all of Wisconsin represented here. Lacrosse, Eau Claire, Oshkosh, and Whitewater. Lacrosse finishing in first right now with 74 points. Eau Claire gets the job done to be second. Oshkosh is third with 51, and Whitewater finishing fourth with 37 points. It looks like a WIAC conference meet out there, and some one of these teams finished fourth or fifth in their conference meet. I think White was fourth in their conference meet and now they're fourth in the nation. Lacrosse wanted to win. They wanted to win big. A little bit of drama there at the beginning, but in the end, no doubt from the Wisconsin Lacrosse squad. As we turn our attention to the women's cha championship, which was a little bit closer, Loris getting it done in that four by four with the sixth place finish to solidify their hold on the top step with 51 points, Wash U a very close second with 49 points. John, Johns Hopkins will be grateful for that third spot with 33 points and Rochester also getting it done by way of the four by four to move up into trophy contention into fourth place with 32 points. Wow, what a competition here this weekend. We saw it from top to bottom. Every single race brought the excitement. Every single athlete brought their best ability they had and we're thankful for that we appreciate everything virginia speech there it is again virginia beach sports center has done for us and we look forward to calling the outdoor races in myrtle beach but from virginia beach d3 glory days ncaa signing off
turn your attention, please, to the award stand as we recognize the top eight finishers in this year's men's 4x400 meter relay. Assisting with awards is University of Mount Union head coach Kevin Lucas. <laughs> Finishing in eighth place with a time of three minutes, 16 seconds flat, the University of Dubuque. Finishing in seventh place with a time of three minutes, 15.90, Loris College. Finishing in sixth place with a time of three minutes, 15.1 seconds, Wisconsin Eau Claire. Finishing in fifth place with a time of three minutes, 14.56, SUNY Geneseo. In fourth place with a time of three minutes, 13.17 seconds, Bethel. In third place with a time of three minutes, 12.93 seconds, John Carroll University. In second place with a time of three minutes, 12.39 seconds, the University of Wisconsin Lacrosse. And your 2024 NCAA Division III National Champion with a meet record time of three minutes, 11.52 seconds, the team of Jared Storm, Justin Noak, Hayden Gibson, and Matt McBride, the Purple Raiders of the University of Mount Union. If the top eight finishers in the men's open 400 would remain in the staging area, that would be appreciated. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. It's our time for our final individual award of the championship. The men's 400 meter dash. Assisting with awards, SUNY Geneseo head coach, Chris Popovich. Finishing in eighth place with a time of 48.02 seconds from Widener, Samuel Knowles. Finishing seventh with a time of 47.97 seconds from SUNY Delhi, Josh Jeffess. In sixth place with a time of 47.74 seconds from Rowan Amara Conti. Finishing fifth with a time of 47.58 seconds from Bethel Grant Nelson. Finishing fourth with a time of 47.44 seconds also from Bethel, Jacob Parent. In third place, with a time of 47.08 seconds, from John Carroll University, Bashir Al-Ramahi. In second place, with a time of 46.97 seconds, from Puget Sound, Alexander Rhodes. And your 2024 NCAA Division III National Champion in the men's 400 meter dash with a time of 46.95 seconds from SUNY Geneseo, Lance Jensen. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now recognize our top four team finishers. First, in the women's championship, finishing in fourth place with 32 points, the Yellow Jackets of the University of Rochester.
This year's third place team with 33 points, the Blue Jays of Johns Hopkins University. This year's women's national runner-up, the Bears of Washington University in St. Louis with 49 points. And with 51 points, the 2024 NCAA Division III National Champion in Women's Indoor Track and Field, representing the American Rivers Conference, Head Coach Matt Jones and the Loris College Duhawks.
But we would now like to recognize this year's fourth place men's team with 37 points. The Warhawks of the University of Wisconsin Whitewater. This year's third place team with 51 points, the Titans of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. This year's national runners-up with 52 points, the Blue Golds of University of Wisconsin, Eau Claire.
And finally, with 74 points, the 2024 NCAA Division III National Champion in men's indoor track and field, representing the Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, head coach Josh Buckholtz and the University of Wisconsin Lacrosse Eagles! And gentlemen, this concludes the 2024 NCAA Division III National Indoor Track and Field Championships. The NCAA thanks you for your patronage of Division III athletics and support of its student-athletes. Travel safely on your way home.